arguments. Yes, this is the concept what we have to discuss. Main method and the command line arguments. Command line arguments like this. Sir, sir very, very simple, sir. Very, very simple terminology. What you people should, should aware. Sir, now, do you know what is the main, main method and command line arguments? One or two questions you, you people can able to expect in this. Sir, what uh, if I can take a class test? Legend, especially for the sake of exam, for the sake of exam, the possibility to ask the questions is related to the syntax only, related to how you can able to pass command line arguments. So the possible bits also I will share so that you people can get much, much clarity. Based on that, we will decide our level. Okay. One minute, sir. One minute. Yes. Here, main method under command line arguments. Main method under command line arguments. One minute, I will show the possible bits so that you people can get, oh, this is the level what we require to prepare like this. Page number 27. Main method under command line arguments. Have you observed, right? These are the possible bits for the exam. Which one of the following code examples uses valid Java syntax? Okay, don't worry. Which which of the following is valid Java syntaxes? Sir, just uh, their concentration is always whether the main method is properly declared or not. Beyond that, nothing, sir. They are asking about whether the main method is properly declared or not. That's what what they are asking. Sir, have you observed, right? Sir, public class a uh, public class main something like they are asking are you getting so public static void main public static void main string array here ox is there but here ox is not there next time after that do you know here public void main is there but static is not there next time after that like we have we have some forget about answers right next time given the code given the code sir now which is set of commands prints hello durga to the console hello durga to the console this is the sir i want to pass command and argument i want to hello durga as the answer then which is the possible set of commands i require to execute that part i will discuss don't worry sir here there are multiple main methods are there jvm is going to execute which main method next time after that what is the output by default we are going to get sir like only these are the possible questions for the exam sake. So make sure you people should aware, sir. Okay. Now, at last, I will discuss uh, these things in detail. Don't worry about that. So now the first point here is, so main method. Here, just uh, I'm taking a class. I'm taking a simple class tester, sir. Can you please tell either code will compile or won't compile? Just I'm not taking any main method, sir. Can you please tell? I'm not taking any main method. Either code will compile or won't compile. Can I can I spell out? Either code will compile or won't compile. Just uh, I'm not taking any main method. This is my code. Let me save this code. Yeah, yeah. Inside the D colon Durga classes. Now I'm trying to save this code. Yeah, so test dot Java. Are you getting? I'm trying to I'm trying to save this code. Yeah, test test dot Java. Either code will compile or not. Yes. If the code is going to compile or not yes perfectly the code is going to be compiled no problem at all so very simple point you people should be aware whether class contains main method or not under whether main method is properly declared or not are getting whether the class contains main method or not whether the main method is properly declared or not these things uh, compiler never going to check yet runtime JVM is always going to check check for that right. Remember now let me compile this code. Let me compile this code. If I'm trying to compile, if I'm trying to compile, uh, we never going to face any problem, sir. If you want just observe that, sir, Java C test dot Java like this. Yes, no problem. Happily the code is going to be compiled. Regarding happily the code is going to compile, no issue at all, right? Okay, remember, sir. If uh, if, if I want to run this code. I want to run this code. Sir, can you please tell, is it going to run or not? Yes, compiles a success, no problem at all. Happily, the code compiles fine. Now I'm trying to take Java test. Is it going to run or not? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay, uh, remember that, remember that. So, yet the runtime, whether the main method is available or not, is it properly declared or not, 
who is the responsible to check, sir? JVM is the responsible to check. Remember that who is the responsible to check? JVM itself is the responsible to check. At runtime, if JVM unable to find the required main method, immediately JVM is going to rise error. Remember that immediately at runtime we are going to get error. Okay. Now let me run this code. Java test. Java test. Have you observed right? Error. Error. Main method not found in class test. Are you getting? Please define main method. Yes, public static void main string array answer. Like this compiler uh, runtime exception by default, we are going to get, sir. So, the important conclusion what you people should aware, sir, should aware is whether the class, even class, doesn't contain main method. Happily, the code is going to compile fine, but the problem yet the runtime who required main method. Who required main method? JVM required main method to start your program execution. Remember, up to this, the first point is very clear, right? So, compiler never going to check whether your class contains main method or not, whether main method is properly declared or not, uh, declared or not. These things are uh, not the job of compiler, right? So, who is the responsible for all these things? Yet, runtime, JVM is the responsible for all these activities, right? Clear? Are you able to understand right? Okay, that's all. Next, uh, at runtime, if JVM unable to identify main method, immediately we are going to get, okay, error saying, array main method is not available, please define the main method, yes, like this point number one. Next, at runtime, JVM always searches for the main method with what syntax or with what prototype, observe that carefully, sir. So, with what syntax, JVM is always going to search for the main method, right? Very simple, very simple. It is always going to search for the main method with what prototype, sir? Yes, public. Okay, public. Next and after that, static. Next and after that, void. Next and after that, main. Remember this one public, static, void, main, string, array, action. Sir, with this syntax, JVM is always going to search for the main method. Remember at runtime. Now, my question is why? Why, sir, this syntax is like this only? Why this syntax is like this only? Remember, very small terminology, right? Sir, why main method is the public? Why the main method is the public? Very simple, sir. Very, very simple. Why the main method is the public? So, who is the responsible to call main method? JVM. JVM may be in some other drive. Maybe you are going to install JVM in the C drive, but uh, your program is available in the D drive. Are you getting? So, to call by JVM from anywhere, it should be public, sir. Remember this one. Why, why it's always public? Why it's always public? To call, to call by JVM from anywhere. Are you getting? So, from anywhere, to call by JVM from anywhere, compulsory this, this method should be public, sir. Next, why this method should be static? Should be static. There are two reasons are available. Main method, main method functionality is a, is a nowhere related to a particular object. Remember this one. So it is not the object level method. It is a class level method because to call by the JVM. So main method functionality nowhere related to object. That's why it is considered as static. Next up. Sir, main method is the starting point of our program. Observe carefully, sir. Main method is the starting point of our program. If it is the starting point of our program without having any object, because at the time of calling main method, no object, without having object, how the JVM can call this method? Are you getting how the JVM can call this method? Sir, without existing object, if you want to call any method, compulsory that method should be static method only. You know, right? Okay. Without having any, without having any method, any, any, what we call object, if, if you want to call that method, compulsory that method should be static method only. Remember, that's why. So, why this method is the static? There are two reasons are there. Reason number one. Okay, main method functionality, main method functionality, functionality, nowhere related to, nowhere, nowhere related to, nowhere, nowhere related to any object. Okay, this is sir, first reason, sir, main method functionality, nowhere related to any object. Okay, another reason is also without having, without having 
without having object without having any object any object jvm has to call this method jvm has to call this method like this right up to this is the clear sir why it is the static jvm has to call this method without having the object jvm has to call this method obviously it should be static method next the main method functionality just to start our program execution to the jvm this method is required but not to define business functionality remember this one sir that's why main method no way related to a particular object without existing object also jvm has to call this method that's why it is always a static clear any doubt respond any doubt up to this okay yeah now the next point sir sir why it is the void why it is the void sir who is calling in method respond who is calling in method yeah yeah sumit you can ask <clears throat> Yes, Sumitra in the dark. Okay. Who is calling main method? JVM is calling main method. Correct, right? Sir, now my question is, if I am calling main method, if I am calling main method, then I can expect some return value. I will use that return value. If a JVM is calling main method, if a main method returns something to the JVM, with that return type with that return value what jvm will do nothing nothing so main method has huh, not called by a particular person not called by programmer if i'm calling a method i'm expecting some return type but jvm calling this method that's why main method won't return anything to the jvm remember that's why main method won't return won't return anything to jvm remember this one okay so this is why the void because i'm not calling i'm not calling it should be called automatically by the jvm jvm never going to expect the return type from the main method that's why it is always uh, sir void return type right next and after that sir main this is a very very important word sir who is calling who is calling main method can you please tell who is calling main method jvm is calling main method are you getting so jvm is the small chota software program okay remember jvm is also one program one one program something like a class something like a class so inside jvm hey jvm if you are going to execute any any class which method you require to call main is the method you require to call are you getting so inside jvm which name is configured which name is configured is nothing but main main is the name that's why so main is the understandable word to the jvm so jvm is always going to call any uh, any program execution with the main only that's why so this is the name which is configured inside jvm are you getting right this is the name which is configured inside jvm this is the name which is configured which is configured inside jvm any doubt sir so that's why jvm understandable word is main main sir now instead of main i want to use durga main <laughs> are you getting instead of main i want to use durga main durga main then immediately what the jvm what the what the jvm is going to do sorry i can't recognize durga main i know only main i know only main like this jvm is going to convey clear right so make make sure you people you people should aware right okay next uh, what is the what is the next one what is the what is the next so sir main why the word main this is the name which is configured inside jvm that's why the name should be main only next and after that sir these string array args are nothing but what command line arguments sir. remember this one sir what is this concept sir can you can you spell out command line arguments sir. these things are by default concept yeah command line arguments observe that carefully sir so why the main method is public to call by jvm from anywhere why the main method is the static now why the main method is the static sir this point i'm i'm repeating again because one student sumit is asking sir here starting point of our program which is the starting point of our program main main correct right yet the time of main method execution sir objects won't be there 
సరే కానీ ఎంత టైమ్ ఆ మెయిన్ మెథడ్ ఎగ్జిక్యూషన్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ ఓన్ బి దేర్ సార్ సో వితౌట్ ఎగ్జిస్టింగ్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ఇఫ్ జెనియం హ్యాస్ టు కాల్ ఎనీ మెథడ్ కంపల్సరీ దట్ మెథడ్ షుడ్ బి స్టాటిక్ రిమెంబర్ దట్ సో ఇఫ్ ఐ వాంట్ టు కాల్ ఈ మెథడ్ ఇఫ్ ఐ వాంట్ కాల్ ఈ మెథడ్ సో ఇఫ్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఇన్స్టెన్స్ మెథడ్ ఐ కెన్ కాల్ బై యూజింగ్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ఇఫ్ ఐఎమ్ నాట్ హ్యావింగ్ ఎనీ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ఐఎమ్ నాట్ హ్యావింగ్ ఎనీ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ స్టిల్ ఐ వాంట్ టు కాల్ ఈ మెథడ్ కంపల్సరీ దట్ మెథడ్ షుడ్ బి స్టాటిక్ మెథడ్ రిమెంబర్ అప్ టు దిస్ ఇస్ ఐ మీన్ క్లియర్ రైట్ సో వితౌట్ హ్యావింగ్ వితౌట్ హ్యావింగ్ ఎనీ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ jvm has to call this method that's why it is a sir static one reason second reason sir so main method of functionality no way related to a particular object suppose if i can take if i can take class student assume that sir if i can take class student sir every student assume name is there name is there next and after that roll number is there name is there roll number is there now i want uh, hey can you please get the uh, name of the student public string public string get a name public string get a name written name like this type so if you want to call get name method compulsory student object must be there without having student object how you can ask uh, what is your name are getting if you want to ask uh, hey tell your name compulsory you are asking this question to the student only means uh, this a uh, functionality is uh, related to student object remember that's why it should not be static it should not be static remember that sir suppose i have one method is there public public static why and yeah method is there okay int a comma int b just int a comma int b sir now here system dot out dot print and a plus b i am taking sir just observe carefully a plus b i am taking now my question is to call this a plus to call this functionality sir based on this functionality have you observed right sir just i am i am sending two int values this method is going to print some i am sending two int values it's going to print some so this is not required to call on any student object without having student object also you can call this method that's why compulsory this thing should be declared as static because this add method no way related to a particular student object sumit are you able to understand are you getting so if the functionality no way related to a particular object compulsory that method should be declared as static okay whenever you want to call you are not required to have student object just by using student class name you can call you can you can call yeah that can come at that are getting we are not required to have we are not we are not required to have student object directly by using class name happily you are allowed to call because this method no way related to student object remember that same style main method functionality also no way related to a particular object that's why it should be static so two reasons i'm telling sumit are you able to understand yes okay that's all this is what you people should aware right so this is syntax very very important for the exam section so public static void main string array arcs so to call by jvm from anywhere next and after that yes sir these things why it is always void is nothing but like you know right so jvm always follow this always going to call main method with this syntax only if there is any problem in this syntax then immediately jvm is not going to call jvm is not going to execute jvm is going to raise uh, exception or error at run time we are going to get the exception or error right remember that sir let me let me show this one let me show this sir main method is according to the syntax only let me compile and let me run this code compile is fine no problem at all yes have you observed main method public static void main hello world scope of hello world everything is according to that only now observe what is the output by default you are getting hello world right by mistake static is not there by mistake static is not there so it is not jvm required main method it is not jvm required main method not required jvm required main method at run time immediately we are going to get exception at run time immediately you are going to get exception okay like this that main method is not static sir please define the main method yes some error run time exception by default we are getting 
sir anyway instead of voyant i am taking int sir i am taking int int if you are return sir int means you should return something yeah, sorry have you observed right the code compiles for no problem at all but uh, whenever we are executing main method must return uh, must return a value type of void void please define the method yes are you getting so you should not perform any changes for this syntax by mistake if you are performing any changes to the main method syntax immediately we are going to get error clear for all of you right any doubt okay sir so now even the rules are very strict but small small changes are acceptable that knowledge also must be required for you people right small small changes also must be must be acceptable what the changes are acceptable observe sir so first change sir first change what change what changes are going to be accepted accepted by the uh, main method right sir so what is the first one public static public static so instead of sir what is the public what is the public please respond what is the public modifier static modifier another modifier right instead of public static you can take static public also instead of public static we can take static public because in java the order of modifiers not important remember in java the order of modifiers is not important remember that's why so here take a bit very special care so public static or static public itself is acceptable don't worry about the order sir next sir void you should not change next and after that main you should not change because that is the name which is configured inside jvm sir now this is string array arc sir. sir you know in how many ways we can declare array array in how many ways we can declare array multiple ways are available sir have you remember sir you can declare in this style also acceptable sir you can declare in this style also you can declare you can declare in this style also remember this one we can declare in this sir you can declare main method in any acceptable form i mean, I mean string array in any acceptable form no problem at all sir here we are taking the one dimension here here dimension here here dimension here three all all possibilities are same okay next the third one sir do you know a r g s is the name of string array remember this sir. name of string array variable reference variable to string array right sir it is just a variable it is just a variable variable you can use any name in the place of a r g s okay like a r g s yeah we can replace with the any name any name no problem at all even durga is also acceptable are you getting that even durga itself is also acceptable next step so public static void main string array arcs like this right sir next uh, there is one more change is acceptable sir listen very very carefully sir listen a bit very very carefully about this terminology what is that is here make make sure wherever one dimensional array there wherever one dimensional array there happily we are allowed to use where are the parameter also are you getting happily we are allowed to use where are the parameter also immediately you may ask what is the where are the where are the parameter right sir i have m1 of int array if you want to call m1 compulsory you require to pass uh, an int array as the argument but now if i'm calling like this if i declare like this to call m1 one int value you have to provide are getting only one int value by mistake if you are providing zero values or two value three values in value one int value you require to provide if i can take m1 of int dot 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 x if i can take m1 int dot 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 x x like this right if i can take like this you can call this method any number of int values any number of int values uh, are you getting that any number of int values such type of methods are called where are the methods are you getting what is this concept sir where are the methods variable number of argument methods such type of methods are nothing but what where are the methods right where are the methods concept came in java 1.5 version remember so wherever here this where are the parameter means any number of arguments you can pass one value two value three value four values and so on internally 
piece of vr ka parameter will become will become one dimensional integer remember this one sir one dimensional array array it is internal because you are going to pass a group of values to store a group of values some array must be required internally where are the parameter is implemented by using one dimensional array concept observe that sir which concept sir one dimensional array array concept that's why so wherever one dimensional array is there happily you can replace with the where are the method where are the parameter no problem at all that is the rule sir okay now here here also main method one dimensional string array one dimensional string array happily you can replace this one dimensional string array with the where are the string array no problem at all dot 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 also clear are you able to understand sir all allowed changes for the main method first one instead of public static you can take static public second one you can take uh, this string array any in any way, valid way next instead of string array you can replace with the where are parameter instead of args you can use any name no problem at all next the fifth one sir this point is also a bit a bit very important right maybe maybe this is a no way related to ocja but having the idea uh, is essential right remember that sir main method main method we can able to declare with the final modifier child class should use parent class main method only sir we can declare with the final final modifier right next the main method main main method you can declare with the synchronizer also synchronizer also main method you can declare with the strict ffp but any of these modifiers no way related to our ocja exam but just evade the point that's all main method happy we can declare with the final synchronizer strict ffp modifier also no problem at all okay these are only allowed changes for the main method sir so these changes my jdm can able to accept no problem at all so in the exam which of the following are valid main methods which of the following syntaxes are valid java syntaxes immediately you should be in a position to answer any doubt any doubt okay let me apply all these changes let me apply all these changes for the this main method for this main method observe that instead of static public instead of static public sumit i hope you are not having any idea in core java exams sumit <coughs> okay static public void static public void void uh, here just the main i'm taking next the uh, string the dot the dot the dot arcs next the uh, i want to take sir here final is allowed final is allowed synchronizer is allowed final is allowed synchronizer is allowed strict ffp is allowed remember that okay so final final is allowed synchronizer is allowed strict ffp is allowed like sir now instead of arc sir durga am take next i am telling valid valid main method only remember that are getting valid main method only observe that carefully sir sir now what is the output by default you are going to get now have a look once sir happily the code compiles fine because i am not doing any mistake next time after that happily the code runs fine no problem at all this is valid main method remember clear any doubt can you please respond respond each and every person so that i can able to continue otherwise whether you are getting or not saurabh so, strict ffp final synchronizer just ignore as of now strict ffp means strict floating point strict floating point okay that's all so this is what you people should aware related to main method declaration what changes jvm is going to accept so this is about the what like this sir why public void static now here it is uh, purushottam 
violated right rule is not violated like uh, violated violated can you please tell why it is invalid anyone can you please tell why it is invalid please respond the many people good good hmm <clears throat> purushottam are you getting the problem okay compulsory return type should be before method name only so return type should be before method name only public static static public in any order you can take but the problem here is you are taking void void is not modifier void is not modifier void is the return type return type return type should be before method or name only are you getting that is the problem what you are having okay so now that's all these are valid syntaxes related to the main method right next uh, there are just uh, one or two important loopholes related to the main method i have to discuss a bit a bit very very interesting next uh, important point for the for the exam say make make sure sir now uh, yes next uh, point very very a bit a bit very important point sir what is that point here is yes. i'm taking just the main method rajan rajan i want to i want to take a main method just i'm taking the main method here let me take i'm taking main method can you please observe what is the argument please respond what is the argument compulsory important question for the intra euro even for the exam also what is the argument i am taking yes man what is the argument i am taking string array now i want to take int array i want to take int array now this one is int array int array now i want to take some double array double double array okay double array this is the double array like this i am taking can you please tell what is the output by default you are going to get if i run this code please respond what is the output we are going to get is it allowed or not allowed compile time error if it is allowed what is the output by default you are going to get yes okay remember that remember that sir you know two methods having the same name two methods having the same name but a different argument types but a different argument types are you getting two methods having the same name but a different argument types different argument types this concept is nothing but overloading remember that what is this concept sir overloading concept two methods having the same name but a different argument types this concept is nothing but one overloading concept okay sir overloading overloading of the main method is possible possible or not possible sir yes you can take any number of main method with the different argument types no problem but jvm is always going to call but jvm is always going to call string array main method only remember this one string array argument main method only okay so if i run this code what is the output by default you will get sir string array argument main method only abjar yes clear right string array argument main method only very very important question for the intra euro okay two methods having the same name but a different argument types is nothing but overloading concept overloading concept applicable for main method but jvm is always going to call such string array argument main method only that's all can i go to the next level this is one important point right next uh, one more point sir one more one more point i'm taking observe that class test class test here class sub test sub test extends extends a test extends a test class sub test extends a test test like this right so now 
<clears throat> yeah. Now here just observe class subtest extends a test like this. Sub so this is parent class. This is the parent class, and the, this one is nothing but what child class. Are getting total total two things are there. So this is the parent class, and this is the child class. Main method available in the parent class. Correct? Anna? Main method is available in the parent 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 main. But child class doesn't contain any main method. Remember, if I take this code, if I if I take this code, if I compile this code, how many dark class files will be generated? Anyone can you please guide? How many dark class files will be generated? If I compile this code, something like uh, uh, Java C test dot Java, how many dark class files will be generated? Two, two, because two classes are there. Two classes are there. Now, sub two dark class files will be generated, sir. One is test dot class. One is the test dot class. Second one is sub test dot class. Regarding sub test, sub test dot class. So for this one class, for this one dot class file, right? If I run Java tester, Java tester. I am executing test class. Test class main method will be executed. What is the problem? Happily, test parent main is going to come. Correct. Parent main is coming. But if I run child class, child class, sub test, can you please tell parent class main method will execute or we are going to get exception? Are you getting my doubt? Are you getting my doubt? I am trying to execute child class. I am trying to execute child class, but child class doesn't contain main method. Then the parent main method will be executed. Then the parent main method will be executed. R, R, parent main will be executed. R, R, simply we are going to get exception. Please respond all the people. Very important question for the entry room. Whenever you are executing child class, if the child class doesn't contain main method, Either parent main method will be executed or not. Or we will get exception. You have to respond. Yeah, remember that. Remember, remember that. There are some people are telling exception. Some people are telling parent class main method. Okay, like. Mm, good. The important conclusion here is inheritance concept applicable for the main method whatever if the parent class contain main method automatically that main method is available to the child class because of inheritance are you getting so inheritance concept whatever parent class properties by default available to the child is nothing but inheritance right inheritance concept applicable for the main method also inheritance concept applicable for the main method also remember that so whatever method whatever whatever main method available in the parent by default available to the child if a child class doesn't contain doesn't contain main method then happily parent class main method will be executed the people who are telling exception observe the parent name another important case are you getting right so inheritance concept applicable for the for the inheritance concept applicable for the child class or for the for the main method if the child class doesn't contain main method then the parent class main method will be executed remember that can i go to the next level yes who is telling exception jahir jahir, uh, jahir. have you observed then the remaining Saurav, I hope you people can able to understand. Okay. Now there is one more small extra masala. <laughs> Assume child class contain main method. Child class also contain main method. Main method. Can you please tell is it valid or invalid? Static method will not participate in the inheritance. Static method participate in the inheritance. Saurav. Saurav. Inheritance concept applicable for static methods, but overriding concept is not applicable for static methods. Can you please tell? Can you please? Can you please tell? In this case, yes, is it valid or invalid? Is it valid or invalid? Valid, valid. Same main method you can define in the child class. Asan, observe. Same main method 
you can declare in the child class no problem at all no problem at all if you run parent class if you run parent class happily the code compiles i'm not seeing any problem if you run parent class parent main method if you run child class child main method if you run child class child main method so clear indication that so clear indication that so if in the parent you can define main in the child class also you can define main but at run time which dot class file we are executing that particular class main method by default will be executed remember but now i have one small doubt sir what is my doubt is sir parent and the child class contain a method with the same name and the same argument types same name and the same argument types what is this concept at our childhood somewhere we may cover what is this concept parent and child class contain a method with the same name and the same argument type this concept is nothing but overriding remember overriding riding concept in the book anyway, we will discuss it is concept this concept is nothing but what overriding concept now the point here is take very very special care about this one overriding concept is it applicable for the main method or not please respond overriding concept applicable for the main method or not <laughs> yes can you please can you please confirm okay make sure yes yes good good make sure overriding concept not applicable for the main method not not applicable for the main method it seems to be applicable seems to be applicable if a parent and a child class methods both are static both are static this a special overriding is nothing but method hiding concept are you getting right what is that concept method method hiding method hiding concept okay remember this one sir this a special concept is nothing but method hiding in the whoops concept you people should aware but if any person is going to ask are overriding concept is applicable for the main method or not simple answer you have to tell overriding not applicable but instead of overriding one special concept is applicable which is nothing but method hiding concept clear clear right yes man instead of overriding a special concept is applicable which is nothing but one method hiding maybe in the whoops we may we may going to discuss about this one don't worry don't worry about that okay that's all these are various things what you people should be aware related to the main method right so now the first point here is okay overloading is applicable inheritance is applicable inheritance is applicable third one is inheritance concept is applicable next third concept here is make make sure sir sir overriding concept is not applicable not applicable but instead of overriding one special concept is applicable method hiding concept is applicable that's all friends okay so this is what you people should aware about that okay in the whoops concept we will discuss about this method of hiding if it is really required up to that just ignore that okay like that. that's all so these are various important conclusions related to main method any doubts any doubt <coughs> about the main method sir why the syntax is public static void main only next overloading is applicable or not next like this right next and after that just a few things i have to talk about command line arguments command line arguments sir so, do you know sometimes while executing the program okay we may pass arguments from the command prompt java test 10 20 30 40 something like this so do you know whatever arguments we are passing from the command prompt these arguments are by default considered as yes, command line arguments are getting whatever arguments we are passing from the command prompt these arguments are by default considered as yes, command line arguments remember this sir what is the need what is the purpose of the command line arguments sir very very simple sir what is the need or what is the purpose of command line arguments observe that 
suppose suppose i want to pass yes sir this is my test this is my test sir i want to merge or otherwise i want to, i want to find the, the sum of two numbers assume that sir i want to find the sum of two numbers two numbers i want to find then that the sum the two numbers i want to pass from the command prompt assume a bit very very carefully about this terminology right what is the need need or command line arguments observe a bit very very carefully about this terminology right sir my 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 requirement here is observe sir i want to pass some command line arguments for the need of that sir i am taking int i is equal to int i is equal to integer dot parse int r integer dot parse int r x of 0 just observe that integer dot parse int of x of 0 you know what is the purpose of this line anyone can you please guide what the need of this line ah convert a string to convert convert a string string to int value convert a string to int int value this is integer dot parse int method right now int j is equal to int j is equal to integer dot parse int of integer dot parse int of x of 1 just the aware x of 1 like like this one right now i'm taking this is not type casting sorry it is not type casting this is nothing but sir just a conversion by using methods we are converting now print of i plus j i'm taking sir print of i plus j like this sir now just i mean system that out just uh, print of i plus j i'm taking sir now my question is whatever arguments <laughs> whatever arguments we are passing whatever arguments we are passing from the command prompt now these values okay if i pass a 10 20 from the command prompt then automatically it's going to read that 10 and 20 convert into int values and trying to print the sum now the main method applicable to find the sum of two numbers to find sum of two numbers two numbers but but which two numbers are not fixed if you provide 10 and 20 then my main method is going to work for that if you provide if you provide 100 and 200 now my main method is going to work for 100 and 200 only if you provide 1000 1000 and 2000 now my main method is going to work for 1000 2000 only sir this code is not uh, work for a particular set of values you can pass anything based on that my program is going to work sir how you can customize the behavior of the main method because of these command line arguments only remember this one by mistake by mistake command line arguments are not there main method is not taking any argument if the main method is not going to take any argument then you have to take always system that out that print error 10 plus 21 are you getting 10 plus 21 i hope you can able to understand so the biggest advantage of command line arguments is we can customize the behavior of main method. So based on your provided value, my main method is going to work. Okay. If you provide 1020, main method will work for 1020. If you provide 100, 200, main method will work for 100, 200 only. So the biggest advantage of main method is, the biggest advantage of main method is, to command line arguments is, to customize behavior of main method. Clear, right? Okay, that is the purpose of command line arguments. Remember, very important terminology, sir. So, anyway, the arguments which are passing from the command prompt are called command line argument. But what is the use? What is the purpose? To customize behavior of the main method based on my provided values, main method should require to work. Such type of concept is nothing but command line arguments. Clear? Are you getting basic idea? Yo, respond okay now one more important point one more important point sumit observe a bit carefully one more important point why command line arguments are always string type <coughs> anyone sir why command line arguments is always string type why java people they didn't implement like int type or int array type or float array type or double array type why they are always taking 
why why they are always taking only influenza yes anyone mm -hmm. good harsh because we can easily convert from string type to another type string can convert into another primitive any other primitive types string is predefined class in java hey saurav string buffer is also predefined class only <coughs> Yes. Why? Command line arguments are always a string type. <clears throat> Any idea? okay remember that remember remember that so string is most commonly used object string is most commonly used object in java not only in java sir in any programming language string is most commonly used object okay moreover from string to any other type you can able to convert you can able to convert easily regarding more over string to any other type you can able to convert sir now my question is out of 100 90 percent of the times minimum minimum 90 90 times sir, we are going to use a string concept sir okay remember sir 100 requirements are there out of 100 requirements 90 times sir, we are always going going for string only so string is the most commonly used data type in any programming language right that's why sir argument is always string type because if any other type you are going to pass array no problem string to other type conversion is possible very easily only okay that is the reason why the main method argument is always a string type because the most commonly user man commonly used anyway default is always commonly used only remember if you want to take uh, sir uh, sir here i want to take the type then which type i have to take then immediately i will ask the question are which type you are most of the times which type you are using in your programs sir string type that's why some people java people they declare string type at the command line argument sir. clear right sir they say so what is the command line argument remember next the why what is the purpose of command line argument? Why the command line arguments are always string type? Okay, remember, make sure. Clear, right? Are, are you able to understand, right? Suppose, assume that there is a bar. Assume that the bar is there, right? Observe that. In the bar, what things are there? <laughs> Don't be innocent. In the bar, usually what things will be there? Ah, huh? cool drinks are there. <laughs> okay, now assume assume that in the bar, sir, alcohol. Okay, alcohol is there. Yeah, yeah. I hope you don't know. Just I know I am the expert in this area. Don't worry, sir. In the bar, in the in the bar, KF. Okay, I mean Kingfisher. Next up, beer. Ah, uh, wine. Ah, uh, rum. Next time, dot dot dot. Several things are there, sir. Assume in that area. Most of the people are always asking beer only. Beer, beer only, right? Most of the people are always asking beer. Very few people they are asking wine. Okay? Wine. Maybe don't ask what is the difference between beer and wine. Don't ask that. Don't ask. I don't know. So most of the people are asking in that area beer only. Beer only. Maybe that uh, college students area, uh, college students uh, relate uh, nearby bar or something like assume that then they have to go for purchase of what we call uh, uh, items obviously these bar people 
are going to maintain which types by default can you please tell for which types demand is more such type of items only they have to take correct or not yeah, so 90 percent 90 percent of the times huh, most of the people are coming for this bar for the beer purpose only then obviously they have to maintain more more beer bottles and the remaining they are going to maintain less number of things remember that okay so same style so most of the time what the people are going to pass what the people requirement string type is the requirement that's why they kept a string at the default type are you able to understand why why the word string string array is the command line argument because it is the most commonly used for most of the people programming requirement it's the very very common things right do you know sir i want to pass don't feel always we are going to pass always we are going to pass 10 20 30 and so on sir sometimes i may require to pass file names sometimes i may require to pass file names file names sometimes i may require to pass driver class name Driver, driver class name. Are you getting? Sometimes I may require to pass a driver class name. Are you getting? Sometimes I may, I may require to pass uh, some system property, some system system properties, uh, properties uh, like uh, some system properties, predefined system properties I want to pass. So, have you observed? File names, driver class name, system properties, all these things are what types are string type only. So, most of the times, programmer's requirement is always a string type. That's why the main method, default argument type is nothing but, okay, string array. Any doubt? Any doubt about this one? Okay, now, <clears throat> that's all. So, now, this is, this is what, what you people should aware. Now, how you can access these command line arguments? That is very important, sir. So internally, these command line arguments will become string array. Have you observed right? A-R-G-S. Okay. It will become string array. Okay. Sir, how you can access array elements by using index? This is x of 0. This is x of 0. This is x of 1. This is x of 2. This is x of 3, sir. Remember. First command line argument is always this one only. Second command line argument like this. But index wise 0, 1, 2, 3. How many number of command line arguments are there? 4. 4 is like this. Are you getting? 4 command line arguments right. In Java, in Python, sorry, in C language, in Python, this one is the ax of 0. Remember this one, sir. This is the ax of 0. Ax of 0, file name, file name. But in Java, ax of 0 is always this one only. Observe that. Sir, now write a program. Write a program, sir, to print the command line arguments. This is about my, my requirement, right? Array, can you please print the command line arguments? First thing I'm asking system dot out dot println. System dot out dot print The number, the number of command line arguments. Okay. The number, number of command line arguments. Command line arguments. Yes, sir, I want to know, I want to know how many number of command and arguments are there, sir. What I want to take, sir, very simple, ax, uh, what is the way, sir, can you, can you spell out? Ax dot length, remember that, ax dot length, length, because array, sir, it is array, for array's length variable is applicable, not length method, remember, ax dot length, number of command and arguments, what you are passing. Next, uh, for each, for each string, Yes, in, yes, in, A, R, G, S. Yes. For each string, yes, in, A, R, G, S. Yes. Okay. System dot out dot print ln. System dot out dot print ln of yes. This is one phase. I hope clear. Are you able to understand? How you can able to print command line arguments? Now, have a look once, sir. Yes, I want to pass. Compiles fine. No problem at all. Yes, maybe. Some small mistake, coding mistake. Yes, semicolon must be required. Yes, the code compiles fine. Next turn after that, Java test. Okay, now I'm passing A, B, C, D, like this. Right? What the answers are? Number of command and arguments are four. And uh, which command and arguments are there? A, B, C, D, like this, right? Okay, sir, so make, make sure. Clear for all of you, right? This loop is nothing but for each loop. Remember, what is this loop, sir? What is this loop, sir? 
for each loop for for each loop right but uh, let me use a normal for loop normal for loop very important for the exam that's why make sure sir for for int i is equal to 0 i is less than ox dot length i is less than ox dot length i plus plus okay now system dot out dot print ln system dot out dot print ln of ox of i sir ox of i like this something any doubt any doubt okay observe we know we know this this concept right system dot out dot print ln ox dot uh, sir, here just have a look once, sir. If I can take like happily the code, the code by default is going to be there, but the output by default we are getting is the same answer only. Clear, right? Is the same, same answer only by default we are going to get. Now the point is, especially, especially take a bit very, very special care, sir. Where you require to take here, sir. This is observe carefully. How many command and arguments we are passing? 4, 4, 10, 20, 10, okay, 20, 30, 40, like this. 4, 4 we are passing. Sir, now 4 command and arguments are there, but index is always 0, 1, 2, 3 only. Index is always 0, 1, 2, 3 only. 3 only. Up to that only, index by default will be there, sir. So that's why 0 to here of the i is equal to 0, 0, 0, i is less than 4, i is less than 4, ox dot length is the 4, less than 4 means 0, 1, 2, 3 only, up to that only, by mistake, if I can take less than or equal to, dangerous word, if I can take less than or equal to, then what will happen sir? First zero, I value is zero. Okay, zero is less than or equal to four. Satisfy, sir. Print that. Ask sub zero. Next ask sub one. Next ask sub two. Next ask sub three. Next ask sub four. Sir, four. Four is less than or equal to four. Satisfy. Print ask sub four. Print ask sub four. Sir, ask sub four is not there. Immediately we are going to get array index out of bounds exception. Remember whether we are using less than symbol or less than or equal to symbol. By mistake if I am taking less than or equal to symbol immediately observe immediately we are going to get A, B, C, D and then we are getting array index out of bound exception. Sir, uh, this is this, this thing you have to take a bit special care. Always less than, but not less than or equal to. Clear? Any doubt? Okay, that's all. Now, one more thing I have to talk. One more, one more important point I require to tax on. So next, uh, another thing, another thing. Here, it's also a bit important. Here I'm taking system dot, system dot out dot print LN, system dot out dot print LN, ox of zero plus ox of one I'm taking, ox of zero plus ox of one, one I'm taking. Can you please observe, can you please observe, the code compiles fine, Yes, no doubt at all. The code compiles fine. Next, I want to execute Java test 1020. Please observe 1020. 1020, I'm passing. What is the output by default we are going to get? Java test 1020. Ah, what is the output we are going to get now? Please respond to each and every person. Accept 0 plus accept 1. Each and every person, please respond. Accept 0 plus accept 1. What is the output by default we are going to get? Okay. The answer is always 1020. Hassan, the answer is always Nalin. Answer is always 1020, but not 30. But not 30. What is the reason is? By default, command line arguments are always available in which forms are string form only because it is internally string array internally string array that's why between two string values plus operator always access always always access 
sir ah uh, between two two string between two string values plus operator always x yes yeah, do you know concatenation only sir 10 plus 20 concatenation is happening that's why the output we are going to get here 10 20 are you getting right 10 20 sir i don't want the string sir can you please convert into number can you please convert into number? Yes, int i is equal to integer dot integer dot parse int r uh, of zero integer dot parse int of zero int j is equal to integer dot parse int of one x one like this. Now I'm taking here i plus j i plus j. Observe, I'm trying to convert into into values. Now I'm trying to find the, what is the i plus j value. Are you getting what is the i plus j? Now observe what is the output by default we are going to get, sir? Uh, shit. Semicolon? <laughs> Semicolon. Because I'm taking Python classes, right? That's why just uh, that impact is happening here. Because in Python, semicolon won't be there. Instead of system that outer printed and just a simply print a statement. <laughs> Not that impact. More number of Python classes, but only one Java class. That is the problem. Dominating Python, dominating in my coding. Okay, now observe that. Yes, it is the code compiled fine. Now I'm taking Java test 1020. Java test 1020. Can you please tell what is the output by default we are going to get now? Yes, 100% pakka 30 we are going to get. Everyone in a position to understand? Any doubt? Yo, any doubt up to this? Yes, that's all. This is another important loophole what you people should be aware clearly not required to give much much explanation about this terminology right okay now what is the next cinema we require to take sir uh, what is the next term? sir parse int method to convert a string to int value so parse int method to convert a string to int value okay that's all it's already string I'm expecting int value. So to convert that, some method must be required. That method itself is nothing but parse into method, right? Okay. These are various important loopholes you people should be aware related to command line arguments under main method. Just observe whether we are in a position to answer these, these questions or not. One minute, sir. One minute. What I will do is. One minute, sir. Please wait. One minute. Just um, making those questions are ready so that you people are in a position to answer that or not. I have to crutch it. Don't worry about that. Just only just let me remove the answers so, so that you can Yeah. Can you please have a look once? These are the questions of the possibility for the exam sake. These are these questions are possibility for the exam for the exam sake, right? Okay. Sir, what what the possibility right? Observe that. Which one of the following code examples valid Java syntax? Which of the following are valid Java syntax? Sir, class public class bunny. Public static void string array answer. 
public class bunny public static void main string array ox like this system dot out dot print in enough bunny i'm taking sir what is the output by default we are going to i mean is it valid or invalid is it valid java syntax or not yes is it valid java syntax or not yes it's a valid because everything is the perfect now if you want you can run this code yes uh, bunny is the output you are going to get sir now is it valid java syntax or not is it valid java syntax or not yes this one is invalid what is the problem yes you declared only string array where is the variable name where is the variable name it is invalid declaration are you getting array and then variable name must be required invalid next uh, third option it is also invalid what is the problem here your static is missing static is missing it is invalid are you getting it is invalid okay like now fourth one sir it is also invalid because the problem is string array we require to use square brackets but not the parentheses are you getting but not parentheses you require to use square bracket but not the. that's why 100 percent pakka it is also invalid everyone can able to understand up to this any doubt okay that's it. now here second possibility right okay public class test public static void main string array accept sir hello hello plus accept zero hello plus accept zero so which is set of commands prints hello durga in the console i want to print hello durga in the console which is set of commands are going to do that activity sir can you please tell is it valid is it valid or oh, respond both compilation and execution invalid invalid because the reason is java c test dot java must be required but not test okay second one is also invalid because at the time of compilation you are not going to pass command and argument invalid third one yes third one valid valid java c test dot java java test durga itself is valid next uh, sir java test dot class no invalid right? so only c itself is the correct answer correct any doubt okay now next one consider the code test dot java sir public static void main int array ox int array main colon ox of zero object array ox object array main colon ox string array ox string array main ox sir can you please tell overloading of the main method is possible or not overloading of the main method is possible or not yes possible i told already but jvm is always going to call string array main method only remember now sir and the commands java c test dot java java test one two three java test one two three like this i'm taking sir what is the result what is the result sir this method is going to get in the chance string array main string array main and ox of zero is nothing but first command and argument one that's why obviously can you please guide which one is the correct answer sir which one is the correct answer compilation fails and exception rises at runtime string array object array int array which one is the correct answer yes perfectly the correct answer is nothing but like this that's all okay so these are the things what you people should be aware about main method and the command line arguments yeah maybe that may be printing mistake where am i yes yes it is missing correct Mm, where is that? Here, colon is missing. Yeah. Okay. Right, sir. Thank you. So, just uh, we will go few minutes break and topic what we require to discuss, right? Sir, this is about main method and command line arguments already we discussed, it, sir. Now we have to talk about now we have to talk about operators and the assignments operators under assignments assignments okay like you should give it so related to operators and assignments sir we have plenty of operators are there in java but for the exam sake all these operators all these internal loopholes not required remember that 
sir which operators we have to discuss sir like increment and the decrement operators you know already this increment and decrement operators we should aware next and after that more concentration very important ternary operator especially for the exam minimum two questions should be there from this area question mark of colon are getting what are these operators are ternary ternary operator question mark colon it's a ternary operator right next after ternary operator okay even very important double equal operator equals method equals method you know in, in our core yava sessions also for the interview room say the most important concept is this concept correct right what is the difference between double equal and double equal operator and that equals method very very important question for the interview room okay this operator we have to discuss next and after the anyway string concatenation operation already you aware plus operator already we aware not required to keep much explanation but sometimes uh, you may have you may require to have these these operators also i mean what what we call the, these are short circuit operators sir. sometimes you may you may require you may you may get the, the questions sir, from these short circuit operators also okay like you should aware sir so now my my just all possible questions for the exam sake related to the operators just i will show at the end we should be in a position to answer that okay now what is the operators concept types of variables sir operators on assignments right page number 30 if i go for the if i go if i go for that page number 30 sir can you please observe that operators and assignments operators and assignment can you please have a look sir they are asking 5 plus 2 is equal to 5 plus 2 is equal to plus 4 plus 3 string concatenation operation compulsory you should have clarity next uh, here second one yes it is also string concatenation operation only okay like observe the possible questions just i'm i'm showing i'm showing the things next uh, we we will have we will we will have sir plus plus operator we will have plus plus operator plus plus operator next time after that x plus plus r plus plus x like this this is also one one operator i mean increment and decrement operators you should have clear clarity and uh, what is this concept sir what is what is this uh, this concept sir this concept is uh, sir conditional operator are you getting this concept itself is what conditional operator we require we require to discuss conditional operator next uh, do you know sir these things have you observed these are conditional operator increment and decrement operator just a possible questions i'm showing sir so that uh, at last uh, we are in a position to answer or not that thing you people should aware are you able to understand right yes okay here just observe int k what is this uh, this operator sir this operator sumit nalin asan khan can you please tell what is this operator Ah, these operators are called compound assignment operators oh, compound assignment operators do you know plus equal plus equal division arithmetic operators assignment and compound assignment operator yes sir, this knowledge must be required next time you observe right sir here what is this operator again what is this operator again ternary operator ternary ternary operator right? okay sir next uh, we had a discussion about sir s1 dot equals s1 double equal to s2 double equal operator dot equals method okay dot equals method same same kind of thing equals method double equal uh, double equal operator dot equals method okay like sir here also double equal operator dot equals sir these are exactly same possible questions i'm showing remember that okay exactly same possible questions dot equals method ternary operator conditional operator like next uh, here what kind of here also same kind of thing okay like now sir what this area wow, wonderful have you observed it? what is this one this is something like uh, ternary operator equals method like okay so for the sake of exam you should have clear clarity about this type of terminology sir, sir somewhere greater than or equal to double and operator double r operator like this we are going to have almost around the uh, have you observed right almost around the uh, 14 questions we have are you getting right so these questions you should be in a position to answer after completing our operators discussion so be ready for for starting discussions because why i'm showing these things without any explanation the reason is where we have to focus much 
that uh, that uh, that area by default you can able to identify so that so like uh, these are exactly same kind of questions you can see in the original exam also that's why make sure more concentration you have to do sir okay like uh, now One minute, one minute, please. One minute. Yeah. Yeah, 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 friends. So now just uh, these are the possible questions, right? Just let me, let me, let me start the cinema, sir. Don't worry. Here, just uh, have a look once. What is the theoretical things what we require to discuss for the exam? Here, see this one. So, first, first operators, increment and decrement operators. Do you know increment and decrement operators, right? Okay. Sir, so what uh, increment and decrement operators? How many types of increment and decrement operators are there, sir? Do you know plus plus? Do you know plus plus? Uh, next, uh, something like uh, x plus plus. R R plus plus X. Are you getting? This one is called free increment operator. Correct or not? Free increment operator. This one is by default considered as free increment operator. This one is by default considered as post increment operator. This one here. Sir, first one is nothing but post increment. Second one is nothing but free increment operator. Right? Remember. So one is free increment. Second one is post increment operator. Right? CM even decrement operators also even decrement decrement operators also post decrement are you getting post decrement x minus minus next one after that pre decrement x x minus minus x any doubt any doubt about this one sir what is the first one post increment operator pre increment ah, next the post decrement pre decrement operators right Sir, everyone in the session having the basic idea about these operators, right? Any explanation is required about this one? Yes, can you please confirm? Any explanation is required about this basic functionality? Basic functionality, okay? Sir, this is just, uh, if you if you observe that, if you observe that, sir, I'm taking int x is equal to 10. Have a look one, sir. Int a is equal to, int a is equal to, plus plus x I'm taking, plus plus x I'm taking, system dot out dot print ln of a sir, SOP of a, a I'm taking. Can you please tell what is the output by default we are going to get sir? Yes, what is the output by default we are going to get? Int a, a is equal to plus plus x. What is the output by default we are going to get sir? Sir, very simple, the output is 11. First, increment x value and then incremented value and then incremented value can you please assign assign to a like this itself is nothing but so first increment x value and the incremented value can you please assign to a assigned to a so now 10 will be incremented at the 11 11 will be assigned okay so now what is the output by default you are going to get sir if you observe that if you observe that have a look once yes the code compiles fine Yes, the output by default we are going to get, sir, is 11, 11 by default. Not required to keep much, much explanation. If anyone having the problem to understand, please let me know, right? Okay. Now I'm taking, here see, instead of x plus plus x, now x plus plus I'm taking. Can you please tell what the output now? What is the output now? What is the a value and what is the x value, sir? What is the a value and what is the x value? I want both. A value is 10. But x value is 11. x value is 11 because first assign x value and then perform increment. 
assign x value and then perform increment increment like this right okay now have a look once have a look once sir a is nothing but 10 x is the limit so same style is applicable for for uh, decrement also so first decrement x value and then assign this type of thing is nothing but pre decrement operator can you please tell what is the output we are going to get now what is the output we are going to get now yes 9 under 9 are you getting right 9 and 9 first decrement decrement and then assign yes abja first decrement and then assign like 9 9 sir first what i want to take post decrement sir post decrement operator post decrement operator like this what is the output by default we are going to get sir you know please guide what is the output a is the 10 but x is 9 a is the 10 but x is 9 okay that's a basic functionality of increment and decrement operators not required to keep much explanation next uh, related to this increment and decrement there are several top level loopholes are there but those things are not required for our certification sake remember especially for this certification sake but uh, the people who are very much interested just go through our material there are multiple loopholes are there sir okay but anyway not required just uh, let me summarize those things right first one sir first point here see this one just a very top level i'm explaining just for complete information go through the material right sir i'm taking int x is equal to 10 int x is equal to 10 system dot out dot print ln system dot out dot print ln of plus plus x what the output we will get now please respond what the output we are going to get now 11 11 perfectly it's going to we are going to get sir now my question is plus 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 x value is already 10 you know x value is already 10 you know right sir plus plus 10 can i take or not okay instead of this line i know x value is already 10 x value is already 10 can i take plus plus 10 is it possible to take or not so first conclusion first conclusion increment and decrement operators applicable only for variables but not for constants. The name itself indicates right. Increment and decrement operators applicable only for variable, but not for constant values. That's why. So compile the method we are going to get. Have a look once. Have a look once. Unexpected type found value required variable. Are you getting unexpected type? Sir required variable found value. This is the compile method by default we are going to get. Clear right? So increment and decrement operators applicable for only for variables but not for constant values. Remember. Next the second point sir. Sir suppose okay no problem. I don't want to do like this. I don't want to do like this. I'm taking like this. Sir, perfectly this one is valid. No problem. Perfectly itself is valid, sir. Just normal. Normal variable and plus plus x. Sir. Yes, itself is valid. Now I am taking final. Final int x is equal to 10. Now take very special care. One another point, sir. Let me explain here. Sir, if I can take 11, I am getting. Now my question is. Plus plus. Half plus plus x I want to take. Plus plus half plus plus x i want to take can you please tell what is the output i will get now ah good but anyway don't worry it is not required for the certification exam but our OCJ level it's not required but still interest if you if i can take like this compare to another body for you are going to get what is the reason for that what is the reason reason for that compare to another body for you are going to get what is the reason is do you know the reason is very simple after applying plus plus operator after applying plus plus operator now it will become value value for the value we are trying to apply plus plus are getting it will become value for the value you are trying to apply plus plus operator again plus plus operator we are trying to apply then immediately for the constant value how you can apply plus plus operator so after applying plus plus operator it will become value value for the value how you can apply plus plus operator right so plus plus of plus plus x it will become invalid so the important conclusion what you people should be aware so nesting of increment and decrement operators 
not allowed remember listing of increment and decrement operators not allowed yes yes remember so plus plus x is a constant for that you can't apply plus plus operator can you please observe can you please observe that can you please have a look once now unexpected time unexpected time sir found the value not variable found the value which is the value sir this one itself is value remember found the value but not the variable that's why the problem is going to come so second conclusion is nesting of increment and decrement operators are not allowed at very top level i'm explaining because these things just keep in your mind that's not required for our certification sake this much level next up next up point sir a bit very important sir sir okay i want to take plus plus x i want to take plus plus x itself is acceptable no issue at all we know 11 is the answer if i can take sir here just observe i'm taking plus plus x or x plus plus can you please tell if i can take plus plus x or x plus plus what is the meaning of this x is equal to x plus one correct or not? can you please respond if i can take plus plus x what is the meaning of this x is equal to x plus one x is equal to x plus one now the point is in the increment and the decrement operators we are incrementing or decrementing by one and the assigning to x so assignment is happening modifying the value modifying the value and the assignment is happening correct right so we are modifying the value at the same time assignment is going to be happen sir now the point here what you should aware if for this variable is the final final sir for the final variable for the final variable you can't perform you can't perform increment or decrement correct or not okay sir because the reason is final variable you can't change the value but because of increment and decrement operators you are trying to change the value remember this so we are trying to change the value that's why immediately we are going to get the error observe that observe that here yeah. what is the problem you are going to get sir cannot assign a value to final variable x getting right so oh, this is the third conclusion what you people should have point number one we should apply we should apply only for only for variables but not for values but not for values we cover second one sir next thing next thing next thing means after applying plus plus operator again i want to apply next thing is not allowed next third point sir for final variable for final variable final variables not allowed regarding final variables not allowed any doubt for final variables are not allowed up to this increment and decrement operators rules right next up one more rule is there <laughs> one more rule is there sir what is my rule is listen very carefully sir sir double double x is equal to 10.5 double x is equal to 10.5 i'm taking system dot out dot print ln r system dot out dot print ln r x plus plus x sir what is the answer please can you please respond can you please respond what is the output by default we are going to get now sir a bit speedily i am covering because these things are not that much important for the exam not in our exam scope that's why don't worry much can you please tell what is the output by default we are going to get yeah okay 10.5 plus plus x 10.5 means 21 nalil i am not doubling incrementing by 1 Nalin Kolkata. I'm not doubling. Plus plus means sir. Yes, man. Good. What the output we are going to get? I don't know. You have to tell the answer. Or if it is invalid, then you can tell directly invalid. Yes. any doubt what is the answer by default we are going to get okay make sure make sure sir we can apply increment and decrement operators only for int values but not for floating point values but not for but not for care values but not for boolean values correct or not yes sir. that's why 
we are going to get error in this case correct respond correct that's why we are going to get error in this case correct correct okay ah make sure you people should be aware most of the people are going to feel like that okay <laughs> most of the people will feel like that 100% pakka it is valid code remember okay increment and decrement operators applicable for all integral types by short int long by short int long no problem applicable for float and double applicable for float and double applicable for char only not applicable for boolean type for boolean it is invalid sir except boolean ever repair for every primitive type you can apply increment and decrement operators right don't get much doubt perfectly valid the answer by default we are going to get 11.5 itself the answer yes ma'am are you seeing what the answer by default you are going to get 11.5 itself the answer sir sir here is your char char x is equal to yes sir char x is equal to a plus plus x after a which character will come b will come perfectly b is the answer perfectly b is the answer not uh, 98 where money perfectly b is the answer we are going to get but the reason for that sir here x plus plus x what will happen is yes? sir a means what a means what 97 a means what 97 97 97 plus 1 means what the 98 98 this 98 again will be type casting to cathode because in the increment and the decrement operators implicit type casting will be there don't worry sir now this 98 will be type casting to cathode 98 means b by default is the answer we are going to get remember what output by default you will get here is b b itself is the answer sir okay already i showed b itself is the answer any doubt right where money Many people, can you please observe that? Okay, so this is so we can apply for all primitive types except the boolean. So if you are seeing for float type, double type, and so on, don't worry much about that. Next one more point, just now I covered. Okay, just now I covered. Sir, implicit type casting, implicit type casting will be performed. Implicit type casting will be performed, sir. Don't worry about that. Sir, if I can take int, sir, int or otherwise byte b is equal to 10. I'm taking. Assume byte b is equal to 10. I'm taking. Now, if I can take b plus plus, what will happen is b is equal to b is equal to byte of byte of b plus one. B is equal to byte of b plus one. First, b plus one will be calculated, and then type casting to byte type. that the byte value will be assigned to b sir similarly have you observed char ch is equal to a i'm taking just a byte old sir ch plus plus ch plus plus means uh, what internally what the meaning of that yes ch is equal to ch plus 1 no no sir it will be the result will be type casted to char type again okay. are you getting so this is what the implicit type casting will be performed in the case of increment and decrement operators right clear are you getting the point next up sir please explain double x is equal to 0.5 x plus plus 0.5 is the answer uh, some people are um, log in without name i'm not seeing the name sir can you please uh, log out and log in again because how i can pronounce who is asking the doubt like sima can you please log out and log in again there are two members are there i hope yeah just with the name otherwise uh, i can't uh, who is asking this doubt and so on yeah can you please observe that ah uh, uh, your doubt is sir please explain double d is equal, double x is equal to 0.5 0.5 x plus plus have you observed double x is equal to 0.5 Double x is equal to 0.5, 0.5. Next one after that, uh, double x is equal to sir x, x plus plus. So if I can take x plus plus, so first x value sir printed, printed, and then x value will be incremented sir. First x value will be printed, and then x value will be incremented. So what is the current x value? 0.5 only. 
after completing this SOP, X value will be incremented means 1.5. Observe. First time 0.5, next time 1.5. Sima, are you able to understand? Okay, because first X value print and then incremented. After incrementing, now I'm trying to print X value 1.5. So make sure. So it is uh, most, uh, most of the people are going to feel, sir, it's applicable only for int values. No, it's applicable for float values, double values, everywhere except the boolean. That's all, sir. This is important loopholes what you people should aware. Okay. Next, uh, arithmetic operators. Not required to give much, much explanation about these things, right? Sir, already everything for our sake, exam sake, almost all the things are known things only. Don't worry. Arithmetic operators. Arithmetic operators like. Uh, can I continue? Are you people are in a position to understand, right? Now, uh, Sayan Manerji. Yes, can I continue, right? Yeah. So now arithmetic operator, that's all. So just even these many points I cover, but all these things are not important for the exam. Just the, keep the points in your mind. That's all. just the basic functionality of increment and decrement operators are enough. Okay. Now the next thing what I got to talk, arithmetic operators. Arithmetic, arithmetic operators, right? So which are arithmetic operators? Plus, minus, multiplication, plus, minus, multiplication, division, and then modulo. Remember that these are arithmetic operators, right? You know basic functionalities, not required to keep any explanation. 10 plus 2, 10, 10 minus 2, 10 plus 2, 10 minus 2, 10 into 2, 10 into 2, 10 by 2, 10 division 2. Are you getting 10 division 2? That's all. These are, these are 5 operators what is the values right <laughs> any explanation is required 10 plus 2 12 10 minus 2 8 10 minus 2 8 10 into 2 <laughs> 10 into 2 20 next 10 by 2 how many times 10 by 2 means 5 is the answer 10 percentage 2 is nothing but 0 is the answer what wow. any doubt <laughs> any doubt in this no problem. If you are having the doubt, please let me know. I will explain. Okay. That's all. These are things already you people aware man. Why I have to, we have to worry. Next, there are two points you should aware. Even these things are not required for the exam. But anyway, aware, aware that's all. So what is the first one? If I can take 10 by 0. Legend, legend. Very carefully, sir. One very important point is there. This point. If we apply arithmetic operator between two variables a and b any arithmetic operator plus minus multiplication division any kind of things right if we apply arithmetic operator between two variables a and b between between two variables a and b a and b the result is always what type the result is always what types are result type is equal to anyone can you please tell what is the result of type? If I am applying arithmetic operation between two variables A and B, assume plus operator I apply. Can you please tell what is the result of type? Yes, yes. Venkat Reddy, what is the meaning of C? Result is the C variable. Result of type. What is the result of type? If I can take A plus B, what is the result of type? Okay? Yes. Remember that. Remember the rule is if we apply any any arithmetic operation between two variables A and B, either plus operator or minus operator, multiplication or division or modulo, the rule is the straightforward rule. Okay? Max of int comma type of A comma type of B. Remember that max of int comma type of A comma type of B. Type of A comma type of B. Assume that's all. This is the reason. Suppose if I can take, if I can, if I can take, sir, int A is equal to 10, int B is equal to 20. Then what is the result, sir? What is the result? Or otherwise, byte A is equal to 10, byte B is equal to 20. 
while b is equal to 20. What the, what the results are? The result is very simple. Apply the formula type of a by type. Type of b by type. Okay. Now the maximum of int comma byte comma byte. Oh, which is the max type int type int type. That's why the result is always int type. Remember the result is always int type sir int type. Suppose one is byte, the other one is the long. Then max of int comma byte comma long. Then the result is always a long type. Remember that. So this formula you people should aware. So if you apply any arithmetic operation between two variables a and b, a and b, the result is always what type sir? This is the type. Max of int comma type of a comma type of b. Sir, if at least one variable is a double type, then the result is always a double type. Of then the result is always double because which is the maximum, which is the minimum already we covered in the last sessions. Have you remember right? By short, int, long, int, long, float, double. Which is the max, which is the min. Yeah. Sir, byte to short, short to int, int to long, long to float, float to double, care to int. Do you know? These things are nothing but this is the chart. Left to right, small, left type smaller, right type bigger. Okay. Max of int, comma, byte, comma, byte, int, byte, which is the bigger means int is the bigger. Int long, which is the bigger, sir? Long is the bigger. Long float, which is the bigger float? Float and double, which is the bigger double? Like this, right? Remember that formula. Clear, right? Now, from this, just anyway, this knowledge, I don't think for the exam, but aware. Sir, now I'm taking, sir, very important, sir. System data out of printer run. A plus B, I'm taking. What the output? What the output? A plus B. <clears throat> Where are money? What is the answer we are going to get now? A plus B. <laughs> Respond each and every person. A plus B is the 30. Who is asking? Asan Khan. Where is the A is the 10, B is the 20? Here observe within single quotes. <clears throat> single quote A, single quote B. These are the characters. What is the output by default you are going to get? Yes. Very simple. The answer. Uh, Nalin. If these are not a string, if these are the string, concatenation is going to be happen. These are the characters. Sir, now again apply our formula. Max of, max of, int comma, type of A comma, type of B. Type of A is char type. Type of B is char type. Are you getting? According to our diagram, int char char, which is the bigger type, int is the bigger type. The result is int type. Remember that. The result is int type. Int type according to our, our formula int. Now, sir, A means 97, B means 98. A means 97, B means 98. So, what about its value, sir? 195. Are you getting 98 plus 97 plus 98 means 195. This is the output we are going to get. Are you getting? Sir, most of the people, sir is telling some wrong thing. <laughs> like you, you people may feel. Okay. A plus B, sir. A plus B I'm taking. Then, sir, these are ASCII values. Unicode values, ASCII values, both are same summit. Okay. What is the output we are going to get, sir? 195. Clear, right? Correct. Okay. So that formula plays uh, a bit important role. Okay. Now, why I am taking this part is now the next terminology is just a bit, sir. If I consider 10 by 0, 10 by 0, observe very carefully, sir, 10 by 0, 0, point 0. If I consider 0 by 0, if I consider 0, point 0 by 0, okay, well, four things I am telling. What is the difference between these? What are the outputs we are going to get if I print these things? 
Don't get confused. <coughs> but the output we are going to get if I print it like this. Hmm. Yes. Don't try to execute and don't tell. Don't execute parallelly. Don't execute parallelly. If anyone, please just concentrate theoretically. Listen. After completing the class, you can execute. What is the output by default you are going to get, sir? Okay. Very simple. Very simple. Observe carefully. Observe carefully, sir. <coughs> now, ten by zero. Ten by zero. Sir, actually, in our normal mathematics, anything by zero, anything by zero, the result is always infinity. At our childhood somewhere, you may hard normal mathematics, right? In your school days, the result is always infinity. Anything by zero, anything by zero, the result is always infinity. Observe that. Sir, here, 10 by zero, 10 by zero. Can you please tell the result is what type? Please respond. The result is what type? Just now I told. 10 means int. 0 is also int. Max of int, comma, int, comma, int. The result is always what type? Int type. Int type. The result is what type? Int type. In integral arithmetic. In integral arithmetic. There is no way to represent infinity. If infinity is the result, we are going to get arithmetic exception division by 0. Remember that. So, in the case of int, you, there is no way, there is no way, in the case of int, there is no way to represent value, to represent, there is no way, sir. So, to represent infinity value. That's why, in the case of integral arithmetic, in the case of int, int type, int type, if infinity is the result, then immediately we are going to get, immediately we are going to get arithmetic exception division by 0. Sir, observe that, 10 by 0. 10 by 0. Yes, have a look once. What is the output by default you are going to get, sir? Exception in the thread domain. Thread domain. Java dot lang dot automatic exception division by 0. Remember, division by 0, like this, right? Okay. Exception in the thread domain. Automatic exception division by 0, like this, we are going to get. Any doubt? Any doubt? Okay, like. Now, sir, if you observe, this is automatic exception, right? What the? What is the result type here? Please respond. What is the result type? It is the int, but it is the double. 0, 0.0 by default double type. Max of int comma, int comma, type of a comma, type of b. So the result is double type. Double type. But in the case of floating point arithmetic, there is a way to represent infinity. That's why in float and double case, if you are going to get uh, infinity, then happily infinity is the output we are going to get. But if it is internal things, don't worry, just give it the point that sir. Why sir and so on. In the material I clearly explained, just go through that. Okay, what the output we are going to get sir, I will look once, infinity. So, we are not going to get any arithmetic exception. Here we are going to get infinity. Okay, like this. So, this is the infinity story. Story of infinity, right? Next, uh, forget about this infinity. Sir, let me repeat. In integral arithmetic, there is no way to represent infinity. That's why if infinity is the output, if infinity is the result, uh, then we will get arithmetic exception in the case of integral arithmetic. Next, uh, but in the case of floating point arithmetic, there is a way to represent infinity. That's why. If infinity is the result, then we will get, uh, sir, infinity as yeah, the output. We never going to get arithmetic exception if it is the floating point arithmetic. Clear up to this? Yo, respond. Up to this is the clear? Are you? Ah, now, let's end this one. But what you want? Can you please show that formula once more? Hey, Sumit, what is the problem, man? Result type is equal, is equal to max of int comma type of a comma type of b. <clears throat> okay. Now listen a bit very carefully, sir. 0 by 0, 
जीरो बै जीरो जीरो पॉइंट जीरो बै जीरो जीरो बै जीरो जीरो पॉइंट जीरो बै जीरो सर नौ एनीथिंग बै जीरो एनीथिंग बै जीरो द रिजल्ट इज ऑलवेज इनफिनिटी नॉर्मल मैथमेटिक्स द रिजल्ट इज ऑलवेज इनफिनिटी एनीथिंग बै जीरो नॉर्मल मैथमेटिक्स इनफिनिटी बट जीरो बै जीरो द रिजल्ट इज ऑलवेज अनडिफाइंड द रिजल्ट इज ऑलवेज अनडिफाइंड ऑब्जर्व केयरफुली सर अनडिफाइंड नाउ द पॉइंट हियर इज अनडिफाइंड द रिजल्ट इज ऑलवेज अनडिफाइंड राइट नाउ जीरो बै जीरो इंटरटाइम बट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो बै जीरो डबल टाइम रिजल्ट रिजल्ट डबल इन द केस ऑफ इंटीग्रल अर्थमेटिक देयर इज नो वे टू रिप्रेजेंट टू रिप्रेजेंट अनडिफाइंड रिजल्ट्स दैट्स व्हाई इफ द रिजल्ट इज अनडिफाइंड वी विल गेट या ओ वी विल गेट अर्थमेटिक एक्सेप्शन इन द केस ऑफ इंटीग्रल अर्थमेटिक देयर इज नो वे टू रिप्रेजेंट undefined the results there is no way to represent undefined results remember that sir if the result is undefined then we will get arithmetic exception observe that but in the case of yeah man ida why is clear can you please scratch it why is clear yeah maybe saurav from your side maybe network problem yeah uh, just uh, take a bit special care but in the case of floating point arithmetic but in the case of floating point arithmetic arithmetic there is a, there is a way to represent undefined result if the result is undefined you are going to get n a n are you getting n a n what is that n a n not a number not a number number sir so here make sure in the case of integral arithmetic to represent undefined results there is no way that's why we are going to get arithmetic exception but in the case of floating point arithmetic there is a way to represent undefined results that's why we are going to get n a n observe that carefully sir here i am taking 0 by 0 0 by 0 immediately arithmetic exception right 0 by 0 immediately arithmetic exception by default you are going to get are getting that okay like now 0.0 by 0 0.0 by 0 observe that 0.0 by 0 what is the output sir n a n by default you are going to get the output are you seeing the difference right these operators are nothing but arithmetic operators these are the extra points what you people should aware but anyway for the exam sake these things are not that much important that's why I'm not keeping much focus but i hope everyone got the clarity okay now this operator is very important sir next operator what i'm going to discuss what is that operator is yes. string concatenation operator string concatenation operator operator okay like this sir what is the meaning of string concatenation operator operator so you know plus operator is there plus plus operator is there plus operator is there <clears throat> yes here plus plus operator is there if you observe plus operator we can use uh, 10 plus 20 its value is nothing but 30 if i use uh, durga plus uh, soft durga plus uh, soft can you please tell what the output by default you are going to get please respond please respond what is the output by default you are going to get right durga soft durga durga soft by default you are going to get okay now the point is sometimes plus operator acts as arithmetic addition operator sometimes plus operator acts as string concatenation operator so it is nothing but overloading overloading loading operator overloading same operator for multiple purposes is nothing but what operator overloading loading java won't provide support for operator overloading except a plus operator okay plus is the only overloaded operator in java sometimes it acts as arithmetic addition sometimes it, it acts as string concatenation right remember that very important for the exam sake sometimes arithmetic addition sometimes string concatenation operation now my question is 
take a bit special care when when plus operator x has arithmetic addition when plus operator x has string concatenation that the division must be compulsory you people should have when plus operator x has concatenation when plus operator x has arithmetic addition that division compulsory you people should have sir very very simple sir what that division here is observe if at least if both are if both are number types both are number type number type then it is always x as arithmetic addition addition operator right addition operator if at least if at least one or one argument is a string type is a string type if at least one argument at least one need not be both one argument at least one argument is a string type then it's always x a concatenation operator remember that sir yeah then concatenation operation like sir now this knowledge must be required for our certification say sir what kind of question you can expect for the exam observe that observe it very carefully sir i'm taking string a is equal to string a is equal to durga i'm taking durga i'm taking sir int b is equal to 20 int b is equal to 20 comma c is equal to 30 comma d is equal to uh, sorry, some some 30 i'm taking so here a is equal to 10 b is equal to 10 c is equal to 20 and d is equal to 30 i'm taking now system dot out dot print in a plus b plus c plus d what the output next uh, b plus c b plus c b plus a plus c plus d what the output next up uh, b plus c plus a plus d what the output b plus c plus d plus a what the output sir everyone can you please respond what is the output sir very simple if you can able to understand this nothing is there sir yeah good good the journey bit very carefully sir how the behavior will be there observe that first first only we will take sir do you know a plus b plus c plus d now sir three plus operators are there if for multiple plus operators multiple operators are the same type then the operators will be executed from left to right this is nothing but left associative observe that left associative itself is nothing but left associative right now the point is very very simple first this plus operator is going to be there so first this one is going to be there for this one is a string the other one is a number if at least one argument is the string at least one argument is the string string now it is concatenation only then automatically durga durga 10 by default we are going to get durga 10 by default we are going to get remember this sir sir because it's a it is the string string only because plus operator is going to access concatenation because at least one argument is the string type now the result we are going to get string only string plus a number again concatenation 10 20 next uh, string plus a number again concatenation okay like this so the answer in the first case we are going to get durga 10 20 30 remember that durga 10 20 30 is the answer in the first case any doubt any doubt related to the first one any doubt are they respond man any doubt okay like now second one sir you can able to answer very easily 10 durga concatenation 10 durga concatenation again concatenation again concatenation so first one durga 10 20 30 second one sir concatenation next concatenation concatenation then obviously 10 durga 20 30 okay like next one b plus c plus a plus d what is the b plus c b plus c what is the answer for b plus c is 30 30 a means durga 30 durga 30 durga d means 30 what is the answer we are going to get now can you please tell anyone 
30 durga 30 correct because first arithmetic addition first arithmetic addition arithmetic addition after the sir concatenation again concatenation because in the middle string came okay last one sir 60 durga by default we are going to get because all these things are arithmetic addition at last a clear <coughs> any doubt any doubt about this one okay now observe cross check our answers but the, all these things are semicolons semicolon <laughs> semicolons like cross check answers yes observe <coughs> what is the output durga 10 20 30 10 durga 20 30 30 durga 30 60 durga perfect okay now here just observe the conclusion again if at least one argument is a string type, plus operator x as concatenation. If both are number type, then plus operator x as arithmetic addition operator. So the only overloaded operator in Java, in Java is a plus operator only. Java won't provide support for operator overloading except a plus operator. Okay, that's it. Sir, next concept we require to talk about okay relational operators next one relational operators right relational operators sir very very simple relational operators are less than less than or equal to greater than uh, sorry greater than greater than or equal to less than less than or equal to right these operators are by default considered what relational operators right so now we can apply these operators for every primitive type for every primitive type except a boolean except a boolean because comparing with a boolean is nothing but meaningless except a boolean you can apply these operators for every primitive type no problem at all sir 10 less than 20 acceptable a less than less than 20 acceptable acceptable next time after that 10 less than 10.5 acceptable no problem at all so 10 less than 20 what is the answer we are going to get a true true next a greater than 20 a greater than 20 yes this one is also true true because a means 97 97 greater than 20 it shall be the true 10 less than 10.5 10, 10 less than 10.5 10, 10 means 10.0 0, 0 lower type automatically promoted to bigger type smaller type automatically promoted to bigger type remember that so 10 less than 10.5 okay is a 10.0 less than 10.5 false ah uh, no ah uh, true 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 is the answer because the reason is 10 is a less than 10.5 only like this right so we can apply these relational operators for every primitive type except the boolean sir so, if I'm using true, is less than false. Immediately compiler will be left and right. Why? Because true and false both are at same level. How you can compare these two things? Are you getting that true less than false? True less than or equal to immediately compare method by default you will get. Clear? Any doubt? Any doubt? Yes? Okay? Like this. Next, uh, if you want, uh, have a look once all these things. Observe that, sir observe very observe a bit carefully <coughs> here i'm taking uh, sir 10 less than 10.5 perfectly true is the answer yes man true don't keep any doubt at all true itself is the answer yes okay true less than false true less than false i'm taking true less than false then have you observed compatible method we are going to get you can't apply you can't apply bad operand types you can't apply this one okay like next uh, durga so the conclusion up to this whatever we covered sir observe that you can apply relational operators for every primitive type except a boolean sir for the boolean you can't apply sir except a boolean everywhere you can able to apply no problem at all everywhere everywhere you can apply no problem at all we can't apply relational operators okay sir for boolean type except that everywhere you can apply next one next conclusion sir durga is there durga is there less than 
Durga, one, two, three, I'm taking. Durga is there, Durga, less than, Durga, one, two, three, like this. Sir, can you please tell what is the output I will get now? Please respond. Please respond. What is the output by default we are going to get now? <clears throat> Compatible matter. Compatible matter. Because, because, because we can't apply relational operators between object types. Observe that by mistake, if you are trying to apply relational operator between object type, immediately compatible method by default we are going to get. Because what is the meaning? What is the meaning of Durga? Sir, if I am comparing two strings, do you want me to compare with respect to length or with respect to unicode? No such type of mechanism, right? That's why for object types, for object types, relational operators not applicable. By mistake, if you are trying to apply immediately, get by default, we are going to get, sir. Observe that Durga is less than Durga 1, 2, 3, like this I am taking. For object types, you should not take. Yes, immediately it's going to tell bad operand types for operator less than. Bad operand types for operator less than. Remember this one, sir. Okay. So this is the error by default we are going to get. Clear, right? Sir, where you can apply relational operators, where you should not apply. Next, uh, one more point, sir. Suppose I'm taking 10 less than 20 less than 30. Can you please tell? Is it valid or invalid? 10 less than 20, 20 less than 30, valid or invalid. Uh, for wrapper object types, if the wrapper object is the number type, applicable. Purushottam. Number type, it is applicable. Uh, can you please tell what about this one? Is it valid or invalid? Respond, respond. Is it valid or invalid? 10 less than 20, less than 30. Okay? Remember that. Remember, most of other languages, it is valid, sir. In Python, if you consider, 10 less than 20, 20 less than 30. Okay, sir, both conditions are satisfied. Both conditions are satisfied. 10 less than 20, 20 less than 30, both are satisfied. That's why true, true. In Python or in C language, but not in Java. Remember, in Java, if you are taking like this, compatible matter. What the reason is? What the reason is? Sir, first it will identify this one. What the answer? True, true, you are getting. True, less than 30, meaningless. True less than 30 meaningless. That's why. So immediately we are going to get the error. Okay. So important conclusion is okay. Nesting of relational operators not possible. Nesting of relational operators not possible. Remember that. Sir, I am taking 10 less than 20 less than 30. Immediately, immediately you are going to get the error. Nesting of relational operators not applicable, not applicable like this, right? After this, any doubt? Any doubt up to this? Okay, that's all. So, this is next, uh, the next uh, cinema, very dangerous cinema, I'm ready to start. Yes, uh, equality operators. Equality operators. Very important for the exam sake. Very important for the exam sake. Double equal and not equal. Double equal and not equal. Someone asked, sir, what about equality operators? Double equal. Who is asking this question earlier? Yes, sir. Nalin. Now I hope these are separate operators, right? Okay. These operators are by default considered as equality. Double equal and not equal. Equality operators, right? So the first conclusion you should be aware equality operators applicable everywhere universal operators right for all primitives including boolean also false double equal to false true or not can you please tell false double equal to false true or not yes yes then then double equal to 20 false is the answer but anyway, it is applicable for all primitives, including Boolean also. Even for Boolean types also, happily we are allowed no problem at all. It's applicable, sir. It's applicable for all primitive types, including Boolean also. No problem at all. 
in the case of boolean in the case of boolean double equal operator is always going to compare values values compulsory it's, a, it's always going to compare values values right now the point here is very very important sir now the point is we can apply we can apply equality operators for object types also we can apply equality operators for object types object types also remember what is the rule what is the rule sir the rule is very simple the rule is very simple r1 double equal to r2 returns true if and only if. observe carefully sir r1 double equal to r2 returns true if and only if both r1 and r2 pointing to the same object point into the same object like this r1 double equal to r2 returns true if and only if both r1 and r2 point into the same object remember that is that is here object is there both are pointing to the same object or not r1 point into the same r2 is also pointing to the same object then double equal operator returns true which is also known as reference comparison which is also known as reference comparison or address comparison are you getting reference comparison or address comparison if both the references point into the same object then double equal operator returns true remember this one sir okay like which is nothing but reference comparison or address comparison right any doubt any doubt about this one okay now sir if you want of course this is this is uh, one one important point if you want a small chota example let me take sir thread uh, t1 is equal to new thread i am taking thread t1 is equal to new thread thread t2 is equal to thread t2 is equal to new thread thread t3 is equal to t1 sir t1 i am taking now here just uh, t1 i am taking t1 now t1 double equal to t2 T1 double equal to T3. Please tell what the answer, what the output we are going to get now. What the output we are going to get now? Please respond. Mm, compile time error, Srini. Why you are expecting compile time error? I don't know. Srini. Yeah. 100% pakka, the correct answer is false followed by true. False followed by true. Very simple. Very simple. Sir, here T1. T1 point into one object. Because you are creating new object, new operator. T2 point into another object because you are pointing to T2. Okay, like this. Now thread T3 is equal to T1. Thread T3 is equal to T1. T3 point into the T1 object. Now T1 double equal to T3. Both are pointing to the same. True is the answer. T1 double equal to T2. Both are not pointing to the same object. That's why false is the answer. Are you getting? False followed by true. Here is the answer, sir. False followed by true, true, it shall be the answer. Now, have a look once. Have a look once. What is the output by default you are going to get? False followed by true, it shall be the answer. Any doubt? Any doubt about this one? Respond. Any doubt about this one? That's all. Okay. So, this is what is the meaning of reference comparison? Reference comparison or address comparison. But here, one small twist is there. What is that twist? Is if I'm taking, if I'm taking thread T1 object O1 is equal to new object, new object I'm taking. But anyway, this level is required or not, I'm not sure. But beyond level only, we are talking. 
string s1 is equal to new string of durga i am taking new string of durga like this i am taking sir now take a bit very very special case sir if you, if you take sir both all are different one is not required let me remove tos t double equal to o next o double equal to o double equal to o double equal to yes yes sir double equal to yes sir double equal to t sir please tell what the answer tell what the answer please respond i want to listen from all of you good <clears throat> the answer we are going to get is that's what you should have yes that is that's what but anyway this point is required for the exam or not don't worry but aware this point here thread object string do you know object is the parent thread is one chain string is another chain remember this is the object class thread is one chain string is another chain so parent chain parent chain but the thread and the string there is no relation at all thread and a string there is no relation at all remember this one to use equality operator between two variables x and y compulsory there should be some relation between x and y compulsory there should be some relation between x and y x and y either child to parent or parent to child are same type same type same type if there is no relation immediately you are going to get compile time error remember okay so let me repeat again to use equality operator between object types compulsory there should be some relation between argument types if there is no relation between argument types immediately we will get compile time error compile time error we are going to get sir okay make sure that relation can be either same type or parent to child or child to parent any anything sir acceptable now t o t is a different object o is a different object both are not pointing to the same same reference same object okay well either any relation between thread and object yes there is a relation that's why false is the answer o and s object and string relation is there both are different object false is the answer next s and t both are different type of objects there is no relation between thread and string immediately compatible error we are going to get any doubt any doubt about this one immediately compatible error you will get sir let me comment this execute first two false false is the answer execute first two false false is the answer sir yes correct false false is the answer but now let me remove the comment if i remove the comment if i remove the comment now observe that compiler will give left and right compare time error by default we are going to get in compare about types string and thread in compare about types string and thread this is the compare time error by default we are going to get sir any doubt any doubt about this sir, terminology okay this is another small loophole what you people should be aware next uh, make sure sir but uh, this rule is applicable only double equals sir but in the case of equals but in the case of equals method equals method if there is no relation simply we are going to get false as the answer equals method never going to raise any compatible run time errors simply false is the answer by default we are going to get okay like now next step next a very important sir what is the difference between double equal operator double equal operator and the equals method and the equals equals method what is the 
What is the difference between double equal operator and equals method? This one compulsory you people should aware. Very, very important question. Ah, yeah. Uh, for not equal also. Yes, correct. Purushottam. Sir, whatever rules I covered for double equal, for not equal also, that rule is applicable. Correct. If R1 not equal to R2, R2. Sir, if there is no relation between these, automatically we will get compatible method only. Okay. What is the difference between these two things, right? Sir, for the exam sake, only one point you should be. Even for the interview room sake also, only this point is enough, sir. Double equal operator. Sir, I want to apply R1, R1, double equal to R2. Can you please tell when R1 double equal to R2 returns a true? Please respond. When R1 double equal to R2 returns a true? Returns, returns a true. When it's going? Ah, both are pointing to the same object. If both are pointing to the same object, then then it is going to return, sir. Not as code. Both are pointing to the same object. Then it is going to return, sir. To reference comparison, address comparison, right? But the R1 dot equals of R2. R1 dot equals of R2 returns, sir. To. When, when it is going to return, sir, true, sir? Very simple. Very simple. If a content of R1 and R2, both are same. Content. Even the objects are different. No problem at all. Sir, even the objects are different, different object, but the content is always same. But the content is the same, sir. Here, Durga. Here also, here also, Durga. Here also, Durga. Are you getting? Content is the same. Content is the same, sir. Even objects are different. No problem. Content is the same. Then we are going to get the true here, the answer. Remember, double equal operator meant for reference comparison. That equals method meant for content comparison that equals method meant for what content content comparison you people should aware is it clear for lobby right yes at very top level you have to aware this one entry of person expected answer is also same what is the difference between double equal operator and that equals method double equal operator always meant for double equal operator always meant for reference comparison that equals method meant for content comparison any doubt any doubt? Okay. Uh, remember, remember the people who are talking a bit advanced words, just aware, aware for them one line, one line. As of now, that point is not required. Sir, in the, in the, that depends on implementation. Remember, the remaining people anyway ignore, just a Saurabh and Arsha. It depends on implementation in string class, in string class, that equals method is overridden for content comparison. In all wrapper classes, that equals method is overridden for content comparison. But, but in string buffer class, that equals method is not overridden for content comparison. Object class equals method, which is meant for reference comparison only. So something like, yes ma'am, Saurabh and Arsh, are you getting the point? Are you getting the point? Okay, yeah. Now the remaining people just why why they are a bit advanced for them just like provided clarity. But remaining people and everyone for for yet this stage you should aware only one point. Remember that double equal operator meant for reference comparison. That equals method meant for content comparison. I will explain with an example. Don't worry about that. Up to this is the clear, right? Can you please tell everyone? Can you please tell double equal operator meant for Double equal operator meant for right, please respond. Double equal operator meant for reference comparison. That equals method meant for that equals method meant for content content comparison, right? Okay. This is what you people should aware. Now let me go for a small chota example from this. Here string yes one is equal to new string of Durga. String S1 is equal to new string of Durga. Durga, I'm taking. String S2 is equal to new string of Durga. Sir, content is the same. Content is the same, but objects are different. Because new, whenever we are using new operator, compulsory 
a new object will be created. Compulsory a new new object will be created, sir. So now string s1 is equal to new string of Durga, string s3 is equal to new string of Durga. Compulsory a new object will be created. Both objects are different. That's why system dot out dot print l n s1 double equal to s2. What the answer? What the answer? S1 double equal to S2. What the answer? False. Deepak, false is the answer. Deepak, false is the answer. Venkat ready. Why? Because which operator we are using? Double equal. Double equal. Double equal operator always meant for reference comparison. Both are different objects. Both are different objects. Don't get confused. Both are different objects. Here, even the content is the same, but objects are different. That's why, sir, here, false is the answer. Answer. But now, if I can take S1 dot equals of S2. S1 dot equals of S2. Now, content wise is the same. Even the objects are different. Content is always the same. That's why, true is the answer. Remember this one, in string class, that equals method always meant for ref, uh, content comparison. But the double equal operator always meant for reference comparison. Any doubt? From this point, minimum 2 to 3 bits you can expect in the exam. Even in your room also, very important question, crores of times asked question is... Uh, this is the difference between double equal operator and dot equals method. Any doubt? Okay. Well, that's all, sir. Sir, next time, if, if it is a null, if you are comparing with a null, null, one object but null, one object with a null, sir, whether it is the dot equals method or whether it is the double equal operator, if argument is the null, null, then we will get a false the answer remember this one one special case right so for any object reference r r double equal to null r double equal to null r dot equals of null r dot equals of null null the result is always sir false is the answer remember double equal to null that equals of null the result is always sir false i mean false is the answer now Correct, right? Okay. Yes, Deepak. Yes, it is a correct. Object class dot equals method. Overriding in the child class. Overriding in the child class. Child class for content comparison. Ah, Seema, you are asking something. Sir, but if, if object is not initialized, what is the meaning of initialize? Ah, correct. That's why I am telling. For object reference, R means... Assume R is already pointing to an object. Okay. If R is not initializing, then that value is a null. Sir, null double equal to null. Null double equal to null. The result is always a true. <laughs> Remember, the result is always a true. Yeah, Cyan. Correct. But make sure that variable is the not local variable. Cyan. Make sure that variable is not the local variable. That's all. Any doubt? Saurav, what is the problem? Saurav, what problem you are getting? String case. Ah, what, is the, what is the problem? Do you have any doubt about double equal operator? Double equal operator meant for reference comparison if we apply for object types. Yes. What is your doubt? <laughs> what is the reference means? Here assume reference type means object type. Reference type means object type. Object, object type. Reference comparison means, uh, are you talking about reference comparison?
No. Ah, what is the reference? That is your doubt. Uh, Saurav, I didn't get you. Saurav Kumar. <clears throat> yeah, just uh, after after the session, can you please? What is reference? Reference? <laughs> yes, here just of the string uh, S is equal to Durga. String S is equal to Durga. Durga. Then automatically, what is the reference? What is the reference? Here, object is there. Durga is the content. And then, S is considered as the reference variable. S is the reference variable, which is pointing to an object. Saurav. Getting the variable which is pointing to an object is called a reference variable. Ah, still doubt. Yes. So I didn't. Not getting response. Yeah. Sir, only why double equal operator is false when do you have written Durga is equal? What that? I mean, in this case, you are talking about S1 double equal to S2 case. Yeah, yeah, good. Ah, can you please tell S1 double equal to S2? Why you why we are getting false? Because S1 and S2 both are pointing to the same object or different objects. Both are pointing to the same object or different objects. S1 and S2. Saurav. No, not same object, different objects. Because whenever we are using new operator, whenever we are using new operator, compulsory new object will be created. Now, if you want a diagrammatic form, observe that. Durga. Durga. S1 is the reference variable for that. Next, another object will be created. Durga. S2 is the reference variable for that. Both are not pointed to the same object. Both are pointed to different object, but content is the same. Double equal operator always went for reference comparison. Both are not pointed to the same object. False is the answer. Next, equals meant, meant for content comparison. That's why, so Durga, Durga itself is nothing but same content. Now the output by default we are going to get. Uh, sir, true is the answer in the second case. Clear? Yeah. Okay. So that's all. That is about double equal operator under that equals method. Yeah. Uh, Sign energy. Yes, ma'am. That is that is the answer. Because for local variables, people are using compulsory we require to perform initialization. Otherwise, we will get compile time error. Okay. Mm. Understand. What is the difference between double equal operator and dot equals method? The most dangerous important point for the for the interview room, even for the exam sake also. Just the aware, sir. Next, what is the next cinema we have to talk about? Bit relational operators. I mean already completed bitwise operators like. Remember that. Very rare, we are not required to have much much knowledge in this area for the exam sake. Observe that. Bitwise operators like. So now, which are bitwise, bitwise operators? And operator, and operator, R operator, XR operator, and operator, R operator, XR, XR operator. First, these three. Let me talk about that. These three operators applicable for Boolean type, applicable for integral types also. Remember that only these are applicable only for Boolean type. And only for integral types, you can't apply anywhere else. Regarding these operators are applicable only for Boolean and Boolean and uh, integral. Uh, I mean integral types. 
you can't apply for float double uh, these kind of care float double these kind of things you can't apply for the boolean case what is the behavior sir true under truth true under true sir observe in the case of and operator if both the arguments in the case of and operator if both the arguments are true if both the arguments are true in the case of and if both the arguments are true then only result is true correct in the case of and if both the arguments are true then only result is true then only result is true true if at least one argument is true at least one argument is true if at least one one argument is true then then if at least one argument is true then only then only result is true observe that then result is true observe that sir r operator you know r operator you know sir and operator means both arguments should be true then only the result is true sir sir now i hope you know true under true true under true next and after the true under false true under false next up sir false under false like can you please tell in these cases when you are going to get true sir only one case only one case when you are going to get a true yes ma'am in these cases we are going to get a true only one case where please respond in which case we are going to true only one case sir in this case only if both arguments are true then only result is true otherwise the result is always false remember this one sir r operator if both if at least one argument if at least one argument is true then the result is always true sir okay then the result is always true true if at least one argument if at least one argument is true then the result is always true sir okay sir can you please tell what is the answer we are going to get in the first case second case third case first case second case third case first case is true second case also true second also true sir but only third case is nothing but false remember if at least one one argument is true the result is always true observe that next when xr operator returns a true this one is called xr xr cap cap symbol cap symbol is by default considered as xr operator sir when it is going to return a true please respond when it is going to return a true very simple sir very simple if if both the arguments are if both the arguments are different if both the arguments are different different then if both arguments are different then result is if both arguments are different then the result is true otherwise otherwise result is otherwise result is false if both arguments are different 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 the result is true otherwise means both are same both are same then the result is false observe that true 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 xr true true xr true what is the answer by default you are going to get can you please confirm true xr true true xr false false xr true what is the answer we are going to get now is true xr true true xr true false is the answer because both arguments are same both arguments are same but second one both arguments are different that's why true is the answer but last one both arguments are same that's why false is the answer are you getting that okay make sure nothing not required to keep much explanation because from our childhood onwards we are already discussing about this clear right and operator r operator xr operator if both arguments are true then only and operator returns a true at least one argument is true then only result is true okay sir if both arguments are different then the result is true any doubt any doubt about this okay that's all now next these operators are applicable for integral types also i covered right for integral types also happily we can apply these operators right how you can if you are going to apply for integral type what will happen sir 4 and 5 4 and 5 4 r 5 r 
4 x or 5. Can you please tell in the first case what the answer? Second case what the answer? Third case what the answer? First case, second case, third case. What the answer we are going to get? Please, please respond. In the first case, what the answer? Second case, what the answer? Third case, what the answer? Good, good. Where are money? Because I told, I told already, we can apply these operators for integral types. We can apply these operators for Boolean type. Because these are bit wise, bit wise, bit by bit we require to apply. For numbers also, these are applicable, no problem at all. Bit wise. Okay. Ah, please tell what the answer. Srini. What the answer we, we are going to get? Okay. Simple. The answer what we are going to get is yes, excellent. In the first case four, second case five, third case one. Third case one. Four, five, one. Itself is the answer. Why, sir? How it is going to be happened? How it is going to be happened? Very simple, sir. Four, first one. Four means one zero zero. Five means one zero one. Five means one zero one. Okay, like that. Sir, four means four means one zero zero. Five means one zero one. Now apply bitwise and bitwise and and. Sir, first these two bits I have to apply. Zero and one zero. Zero and zero zero. One and one one. What you put its value, sir? Four. That's why these operators are called bitwise. You have to apply bitwise. That's why these operators are by default considered bitwise operators, right? Okay. The output by default we will get is four. Clear? Are you getting? Similarly, five if you want to apply one zero zero one zero one. Are you getting five? One zero zero one zero one. Sir, R operator. R operator. So zero R one. At least one one is there. Both are 0, 0. Sir, both are 1. Excellent. 1, 0, 1. 1, 0, 1. Its value is nothing but 1. 5 itself is the answer. Clear, right? 5. Next, 4 XR. Sorry. 4 XR 5. 5 by mistake. 4 XR 5. 5 by mistake. Okay. 4 XR 5. What is the answer by default we are going to get, sir? Okay. The answer is 1. The answer is 1, 1. Because the reason is yes. 4 means 1, 0, 0. 5 means 1, 0, 1. Okay, XR. XR, both the bits are different? 1. Both bits are same? 0. Both bits are same? 0. That's why 0, 0, 1 means 1 is the answer. Any doubt? Any doubt? After this, okay. Sir, if you want, just uh, let me show these things right. Uh, what is that? When got ready? I didn't get you. R means not plus, R means not star. Anna means star. Here you can't use. Just uh, the symbols only we should use. Okay, not plus or star symbols you are not allowed to use. Okay. Now, here just observe. System dot out dot print LN. System dot out dot print LN, 4 and 5. Okay, 4 and 5. 4 R5, 4 XR5. 4 R5, 4 XR5. Okay, 4, 4 XR5. The output by default we are going to get. The code compiles fine, no problem. The output by default we are going to get, sir, 4, 5, 1. Okay, that's all this is. Okay, but very rare. I told at the beginning, right? This type of questions uh, sir, a bit rare, but all earlier I covered, right? Okay, those kind of questions are very common. Okay, like and operator, R operator, bitwise, not that much important for the exam. Okay, don't worry. Now, what is the next thing we have to talk about? Sir, this is bitwise complement operator. Bitwise complement operator, operator, right? Sir, so now just aware in the last week somewhere, explain this one bitwise complement operator. Here, if I can take negation of 
4. What is the answer by default? We are going to get negation of 4. Bitwise complement operator. One important point you should have answered. This is a bitwise complement operator. Yeah. Can you please tell what is the output we are going to get now? Please respond. Immediately you should tell. Okay, stop room. Immediately you want to, you have to tell. Don't take single second time also. <laughs> yes. What is the output by default we are going to get? What is the output by default we are going to get? Yes. What is the output we are going to get? Negation of true. Okay. Ah, good, good. The perfect answer what you are going to get. False is. Ah, the answer what we are going to get. False. False is a false answer. Compile time error we are going to get. Okay. Compile time error we are going to get. Because this operator applicable only for intertype but not for boolean type remember only for intertype but not for boolean type but not for boolean type okay if you apply if you apply negation of true sir if we apply negation of true sir immediately compiler ready to give left and right compiler ready to give left and right hey bad operand type sir for unary operator you can't apply you can't apply like this right okay make sure now now sir you can apply negation of four okay well sir first point is the clear first point is the clear this operator is applicable only for intertype but not for boolean but not for boolean okay if you are trying to apply for the intertype what is the output we are going to get can you please now respond immediately yes immediately you have to respond negation of four Negation of 4. Yes, good. Maybe correct answer or wrong answer. First, tell me. What is the output we are going to get now? Yes. Okay. Make make sure. Make sure. You people should aware. Correct answer is. Hmm. Yes. 3 is the correct answer. How you are going to identify is. Let me check. 4 itself is nothing but 1, 0, 0. Bitwise complement is nothing but 0 will become 1, 0 will become 1, 1 will become 0. Then automatically, then automatically, okay, what is the output by default we are going to get here? 3 itself is the answer. Are you getting? Are you getting? Ayo, respond, man. 3 itself is the answer. Correct? Are you, you are silent. Correct? Respond, correct? Ah, observe that. Observe that. What is the output by default you are going to get if I do that? <laughs> if I do that, what is the output by default we are going to get? Ah, repeat. One minute. Let me repeat again, sir. Let me repeat again. 4 means 100. Zero, zero. 4 means 100. Zero, zero. Bitwise complement. Complement. 0 will become 1. 0 will become 1. 1 will become 0. Then 0, 1, 1 means converting to decimal, its value is the 3. That's why 3 itself is the answer. Correct? Correct? Yes? <laughs> yeah. Observe the output. Most of the people are going to fail. Sir, 3 is the answer. Minus 5 itself is the answer we are going to get. What the answer, sir? Minus 5. Okay. Remember that. Why you are going to get minus 5? Because complement operation we require to apply for 32 bits, not for 3 bits. Remember that. For 32 bits, not for 3 bits. So complement operation we require to apply for 32 bits. Okay. So that part you people should aware. Okay. Do you want me to explain internally? But anyway, for the sake of exam, not required. If you really want, I will explain. Or otherwise, I will go for next point. If you really required, but for the exam, it's not required. For the exam, it's not required. If you want, I will explain. Otherwise, we can. Yeah. Because Purushottam, we are already 5, minus 5 is the answer. That's why. <laughs>
<laughs> okay just uh, two minutes i will spend two minutes i will spend just to observe that sir what is this one negation of four negation of four first first how you can represent a number how you can you can represent a number four okay remember 30 to bit representation in the 30 to bit representation first bit first bit is also known as most significant bit first bit meant for sign bit what is that sir first bit first bit sign bit sign bit zero means positive positive number one means negative number sir clear first bit i'm talking about out of 32 bits most significant bit is nothing but first bit meant for sign sign representation because it's the positive positive or negative that's why representation right first so zero means positive one means negative sir zero zero means positive one means negative negative sir now first it is already positive number four that's why zero zero first bit is completed because positive it is a zero next uh, positive numbers remember this one positive numbers will be represented positive numbers will be will be represented will be represented in in represented directly in the memory directly in the memory remember this one positive numbers will be represented directly in the memory directly in the memory so that's why zero 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 last sir zero one zero zero because sir one zero zero thirty two bit representation is like this any doubt any doubt observe a bit carefully sir any doubt so here make make sure 32 bits first bit is the sign bit zero means positive number one means negative number positive numbers will be represented directly in the memory negative numbers will be represented will be represented represented in two's complement form negative numbers are represented in two's complement form remember that what is the meaning of two's complement sir negative numbers will be represented indirectly in the memory in two's complement form what is the two's complement form what is the meaning of two's complement sir first uh, one's complement first we have to find one's complement plus one if you find one's complement plus one now it will become two's complement remember let me repeat once again most significant bit acts as sign bit next zero means positive one means negative positive numbers will be represented directly in the memory but negative numbers will be represented in two's complement form what is the meaning of two's complements are one's complement plus one up to this any doubt please respond are you able to understand theory okay now apply so here four 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 means how to represent positive number most significant bit is zero remaining bits represent value directly value directly four sir now negation of four i'm taking negation of four means uh, what will happen sir zero will become one uh, negation means bitwise complement complement apply complement one 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 dot 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 one sir zero one one correct or not zero will become one one will become zero bitwise complement complement like this now in this most significant bit what is this one your response most significant bit what is this one one or zero one or zero one one because here most significant after applying bitwise complement one one means a negative number one means what negative negative number if it is a negative number sir the remaining bits represent in two's complement form the remaining bits represent value in two's complement how to find two's complement sir first find one's complement under them add one add one sir now first find one's complement sir if i find one's complement sir zero zero how to find one's complement interchange zeros and ones sir sir zero 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 and so on zero zero one zero zero sir this is the one's complement add one add one zero plus one one zero one remaining bits are zero 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 and so on now one zero one its value is a five already negative negative minus five is the answer
clear are you able to understand so just the basic idea you people should aware it is not mathematics class <laughs> it is not mathematics class don't worry about that okay negation of 4 itself is nothing but minus 5 how it is going to be happen sir just aware this is applicable only for okay this is i mean applicable you require to apply complement operator for 32 bits not for 3 bits okay observe that observe uh, shiv kumar uh, not sure saurav saurav can you please observe negation of 4 up to this clear saurav up to this clear saurav kumar up to this is the clear no are this is the four representation is it okay how to represent four in the memory yes it means binary form correct are you able to represent four how to represent four in the 32 bit representation is it are you able to understand this line okay negation of 4 means uh, this line are you able to understand zeros will be replaced with one ones will be replaced with zero hey, what operation i did man zero replaced with one zero replaced with one zero replaced with one and the one replaced with zero zero replaced with one yes are you getting up to this because bitwise complement zeros are replaced with ones ones are replaced with zeros now what is the value of this number this is about doubt here first bit is one one means what one means what one means what negative are you getting one means what negative 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 like this right one itself is nothing but negative negative number so represented in two's complement form Negative numbers represented in two's complement form. Remember that. So, if it is the negative, remaining bits will represent value in two's complement. How to find two's complement? First, find one's complement and then add one. How to find one's complement? Interchange zeros and ones. Are you getting interchange zeros and ones? So, one replaced with the zeros, zero replaced with the ones. Okay. Sir, all these ones are replaced with the zeros. Now this zero replaced with one. This one one replaced with the zeros. This is one's complement. And then add one. Then it will become two's complement. So zero plus one. One. Zero. Next one. Remaining bits represent value like this. Sir, what is the output by default we are going to get? Already negative. One zero one means five. So, minus 5 itself is the answer. Saurav, are you getting? Because 4 by default is what type? Int type. Int type. Int is what type? What, what is the size of int? 32 bit. That's why we have to apply for 32 bit. If it is the long value, then you, you require to consider 64 bit. Here, why I am taking 32 bit means uh, because int is what size? 4 bytes. 4 bytes means 32 bits. Okay. Now, so that's all this is about bitwise complement operator. Next, uh, Boolean complement operator. Boolean complement operator. Okay. Sir, very simple. This is the negation, sir. As the rest is simple. Negation, negation like this. Sir, how you can able to just the negation of true? What is the answer by default you are going to get, sir? False. Okay. Nothing there to explain. Negation of true means false. Sir, negation of three or negation of four, if I can take, compare them here. Because this negation symbol is applicable only for Boolean, but not for integral types. Clear for all of the but not for integral types. Remember that it's applicable only for Boolean, but not for integral types. So, up to these bitwise operators are nothing but and operator we covered, R operator we covered, and operator we covered, R operator we covered, XR operator we covered. Remember that XR operator we covered, right? 
all these operators applicable for boolean type applicable for int type all these operator applicable for boolean type applicable for int type remember remember this one next next sir this one is applicable this is called bitwise complement operator it is applicable only for int type okay next this applicable uh, sorry this one this one is applicable only for boolean type are you getting only for boolean type observe that carefully any doubt any doubt yo this is the bitwise complement this is the negation first three operators applicable for boolean and int this operator is applicable only for uh, int type this operator is applicable only for boolean type that's all friends